Oh yeah, finally we've got some snow. Look at that little, little bit. So beautiful. We are about to clear the snow for the first time. Camera crew, are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go clear the snow. <laughs> so we already filmed for like the last month since October. We had our first really light snow and we said we need to get something set up because we had just got a new tractor, a Coyote 60, a VK 6010 HST. It's a hydrostatic transmission and it's got hydraulics uh, for the loader and the pitch and then it's got two hydraulics with the tent controls on the back. And so we ended up stealing one of those to run our hydraulically angled snow plow. So we're going to try that now. And what is the model on that one? It says it on there. It's okay. we'll have to put it in the description. Yeah, it'll be in the description below. Yeah. But it's 94 inches wide or 92 inches wide. 94, 94. and a half. Mm -hmm. And our door opening is 96 inches or something like that. Yeah. It's it's like an inch on either side. So we'll show you how we get out the door and we'll show you how it's parked. But I'm super excited because I kind of don't like dealing with snow, but that's why we're glad to have this thing. So we're gonna show you the real no BS process. The only thing we did was set out our shoes for this and get sunglasses on our head. Well, and the camera crew's wearing a coat the and crew hat. Is and up because she has to be outside in it. <laughs> but I'm gonna be inside the cab. So we'll give you guys a view inside the cab and then we will, of course, let you watch from third person. And then maybe we'll do a little bit inside the cab if it'll work. Oh, okay. So, yep. So we've had the tractor warming up for about two minutes. Yeah. So part of the reason we're showing you this is because we have a three-car garage. It's deep in the middle. It's 26 feet deep. This is 24 feet deep. And that's 24 feet deep. And we have eight-foot-high doors, which means this, this coyote does not totally fit. The weather strip touches. And so that was one of the complications we were aware of, we got it, is that when you add that extra thickness of snow, it could cause problems. So we've got a ballast box on here from our previous tractor. This thing's up to about 800 pounds. We probably wouldn't need that. This is our hydraulics that we're using right now. There's two circuits. There's actually a little window under there too. You can see the knobs. There's a blue and a gray, or blue and black, if you will. And I have a loaner truck right now, so the mirror gets in the way, but my normal mirrors do not. So I had that collapse. And as you can see, I can walk around. And this is the plow. I actually tuck it in a little bit more under normal circumstances, but I was, um, I didn't get myself quite exactly right. So the reason we show you this I don't know if it makes sense when you go out and just stand like in the snow as I pull out, or do you want to show them in the cab? So this is Come on. this is how the doors open, and just so you guys can see, the doors open on the truck. So I know a lot of times when you're looking at a big tractor, you're concerned you're not going to be able to fit it in the garage, and a lot of people would not park this type of tractor in the garage. We wanted it in the garage. That was one of our primary deals. Yep. And the garage opening is not the only reason because all our trees would it would cause us to not get through if it was a whole lot bigger. Yeah. So and we also have a bridge we have to get over too, which I built. So if you want to watch that, we have links um, in the playlist. Do you want so, me to go out then while we're pulling can, out? We'll show it here real quick. Okay. So you can enter this cab from either side. Obviously, there's heat and air conditioning. I have the heat running. It's not hot yet, but it's it's warm enough. It's going to keep me decent. We have a wiper up front. We have a wiper in the back. And we have... Sorry. We have a wiper up back. And then this thing has defrost. There's the wiper, guys. We had a glare. And then this is the control I'll be using to move the angle of the blade. And then, of course, I'll use this to control the up and down um, of the loader. And then, of course, the dump or the pitch on the, the bucket. So everything's running. It's a little bit cold still, but I think we're okay. 
I'll probably kick up the RPMs just a little bit. Get those going. We've got lights set up, so we'll be able to do this in the dark. I have a ton of lights on the outside now. It came with a lot of them. And then of course the front lights. So for clearance, you know, a lot of times you're doing it in the dark. And then of course it's got a stereo and you can feed in an auxiliary. So you can listen to music or you can turn on the stereo, but I'm gonna turn it right back off because I don't want copyright issues. So we'll try to get you a first person view, um, but we haven't had much snow. So here's the third person view. Thanks camera crew. Okay, I'm gonna go out and watch it pull out. Or you could probably stand on there and watch it. So whatever you think's gonna show getting out. I'll go out, it's fine. Okay. So I'm gonna step over everything here. So there is a little bit of a drift kind of right here in front of the door, which is one of the things that Brian was talking about, is we wanted to make sure that that bump wasn't going to cause an issue height-wise. It's an SP240, you can see the model number, it's from Titan Assessments. So that's why it's nice for him to be able to back in because then he can pull out and be ready to plow immediately. We have a fair amount of drifting, but we did get several inches overnight, probably as a grand total. And this is the first time that we've used this, that he's used it. I think he said, holy crap. <laughs> oh, he said he can't even see the driveway, so he's going to have to figure out. We're going to maybe have to get like some snow sticks or something. <laughs> he's way too excited about this, by the way. Well... Oh, he went right to the edge, so that was like perfect. I'm a ways off uh, in the grass, so I'm just trying to kind of give him some room to figure out where he's going. trying to find the curve there, I think. So the only modification that we have made to this snowplow before we used it, we replaced the steel cutting blade that came with it. We replaced that with, um, a UHMW ultra high molecular weight cutting edge. And that seems to be working really nice. Our concrete is um, about a year and a half old. And so we wanted to keep it in good shape 
so we opted to switch out that cutting edge. So he's got it and he's able to just push it all. That worked really nicely. So I don't know if he's going to turn around. It is actually really slick under this stuff, so I'm going to attempt to not fall while I'm filming. But you can see here, that's that worked really well. So I'll kind of try and walk down here a little bit so you can see. It's going to obviously take a little bit more to clear the approach because it's the whitest, second whitest from the driveway that's right in front of the house. But it made some big, these snow piles here are knee high on me. And I think with 94 inches, it'll probably take him pretty much two passes to do the width of our driveway, the main part of our driveway. And then, you know, just have to clean it up a little bit. The other thing that's nice about having a big plow like this, we live being out in the country on the road that isn't the first priority of the county for getting plowed. So sometimes it's a while before there has not been a plow down our road today. I could see truck tracks, um, but there has not been a plow down our road today. So it's nice that if there was an emergency, he could plow us up to the up to the main road at least, which gets plowed a little more frequently. I'm not sure which way he's going to go. I'm going to jump over to this side. Sorry for the wind noise, guys. We don't ever do lapel mics when we are out doing tractor stuff because it's just one more layer of crazy complication. He was right on the edge that time, so that was great. And then he can just go all the way straight off the end of our overshoot down there. It's probably going to take him a little while to figure out what his pattern is going to be. I know last year was our first winter out here. And once he had done snow a couple of times, kind of knew what he wanted his route to be. It didn't take him very long at all. And this is way better. Last year he had a small, I think it was a 54 inch, might have been a, I think it was a 54 inch plow on our zero turn. And he had a box blade on our John Deere 20, 1025R that we had last year, both of which were significantly smaller than this. And when we looked at this one, this is the 94. They, the next size down was, I believe, a 74. It might have been a 72. But when we figured out when it's angled, we wanted it to be wider than the tires, obviously, if you're angled all the way over. So that's why we ended up going with the 94, even though we knew it was going to be really tight on the garage fit. We have enough to clear that we wanted kind of that maximum working surface. And it wasn't a huge, wasn't a huge price difference. We link to all of our Titan attachments in the description if you want to look at them. We we have several, uh, at least four, I think, things from them, and we've been really happy with Titan. So if you're looking for a good value on tractor attachments, I would definitely check them out. Just cleaning up 
that one edge again. So he pretty much has both sides all the way down. Let's look. Um, I think I'll probably have to do a little bit more at the approach there, but that's the whole driveway for the main part of the drive. That is super nice right there. The We had a back drag blade. That's right, we had a back drag blade last year and we had a box blade for snow on our 1025R, but the back drag blade was just stationary. So if he needed to change it, then obviously he had to get out and change the angle or he had to just deal with it at the angle that it was at. So to be able to sit in there and just flip back and forth is gonna make it a lot easier to clear this big section right in front of the house. He's gonna have to find the curve and find the edge. This is really only the second snowfall that we've had this year, which is pretty crazy for the middle of December. A couple days ago it was almost 60 and now we have six inches of snow. Now he's kind of clearing up to our mailbox. I think he's going to take you for a ride. Hold on just a second. Well, so far so good. It's it's different than running the small one because I haven't figured out my pattern yet. And that's the hardest part of, of plowing snow is figuring out where you can go so you don't have to 
go over your own tracks and stuff. But did you see how heavy that stuff is? I know, yeah. It's incredibly heavy snow. This is the kind you can pick up and make a perfect snowball with. I'm really comfortable in here. My camera crew is freezing her butt off. Come in here and see you're warm. Um, everything is running really good. I, I tried high, low, and middle gear. The high, low, uh, the high works really good, but it's a little jerky. The mid is really nice. Low is just too slow. But the thing is, what you run out of, before you run out of uh, power, is you run out of traction, even with all this weight, because we have a thousand pounds almost, 950 to be exact, mm -hmm. worth of water weight, which is antifreeze, obviously. And then back here, we have 800 pounds in the back. Now that might not be super helpful with this, because you're gonna want to lift on the opposite side, but make sure you get into the float setting. Show them that little label there. Kind of bring the oh, camera in like this. Yeah. There you go. You see the float setting, guys? So the float setting is all the way down. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So when you lower this down, if you don't know anything about tractors, that goes to the ground, and then look, watch. There's a detent. See, it takes the downward pressure off, and it just goes to the weight of the bucket. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you, you probably don't want to do a ton of adjustments while you're just sitting still, but you can because it's wet. Okay? Yeah. This thing has been working really good. Our poly blade is cutting like steel. So we'll look at how much wear and tear we have after this first cleaning. But boy, I tell you what, it is the only thing I'm concerned about is that. Like, I'm going to have to push this snow back a long ways because it's so heavy. And it's just the super heavy wet snow that would have worked really poorly with our with our zero turn. Mm -hmm. And it's really slick under this stuff. It's extremely slick because it rained all day yesterday. Yeah. So, this is working really good. My four-wheel drive is on. And it's been, I mean, I'm super comfortable until I open the door. I've been really comfortable in shorts, t-shirts. And the other thing I learned is you don't want to plow. Once you get over the crown of a, a road, you, you, you want to be careful to be on it so you can lock it out of the detent because it gets in a detent and you got to break it free. Show them. See this? You got to break it free. Mm -hmm. And then you can lift. So it does take some time for the hydraulics and everything to respond. The hydraulics on this machine were faster than any of the other ones that I drove. Granted, it is a brand new machine. I was comparing it to a John Deere. Um, and I forget the model right this second, but it was basically a 46 horse and this is a 60 horse because this is turbocharged um and that was a 30 that was turbocharged to make 46. this is a 45 turbocharged to make 60. Um, i think it's like 57.8 or something like that but it's 60 horse and uh turbo diesel so really turbocharged diesel really happy with it so far visibility is really good i don't know if you guys could tell when i pulled out but I was just being super careful because I haven't even had to use my windshield wipers, by the way. Yeah. Um, just because everything is warm enough, it's just melting when it hits. But during a heavy, thick nighttime snow, it's going to catch up with you and you'll have to use that. So visibility is going to suffer. But if you, you have defrost on these, I'm, I'm not even on the highest setting of warm. Are you feeling better, by the way? It's a little bit okay. better. So anyway, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have camera crew go up and just kind of watch from different angles. I could show you one plow, but it's gonna be really hard for me to run it and yeah. hold the camera at the same time, unfortunately. I'm not sure it's gonna be that much. I mean, they can see it's, from here. It's really cool though, when you're plowing to watch the curl come up. Yeah. I mean, it's this is the heaviest, it's like some of the worst. And you'll notice I caught a little teeny bit of grass, but I'm finding that because the blade is long enough, it basically, there's no shoes on this machine. So when you go off the edge, as long as you have the majority of it and you're in float, as long as you have the majority of it on the flat surface, it doesn't dig. Now, it's going to dig if you have a bump. If you have like a weird bump that's higher than the driveway um, or the parking lot or whatever you're clearing, then yes, you'll have you'll have some digging. But you can see up there, I got a big chunk of grass. Yeah. I'm hoping that one's not too bad, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. You can either do that or you can come out here with a shovel, which would suck. And I'd have to not be in shorts. Right? Right. Now, our front sidewalk is the other big concern, which we did not put up the, uh, we did not put up our oh, downspout other. because we thought that the rain was gonna rain, 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 rain all day, and it did. And so we forgot to put that up, so we'll have to put that up. And then I can try clearing the 30, or how wide is that? That's like 36. No, it's not 36. 60? It's 60 inches oh, wide. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. So yeah. I can, this is a 94 inch plow, so at an angle, of course, it's not, it's not 94 and a half inches wide. Right. Okay? So what we're gonna do is, well, the, the frame is 94 and a half, and we had them cut, it's 94 and 5 eighths, and then we had them cut the cutting edge to 94 and a half, right? Yes. Okay, so we'll pause it, 
Well, actually, I'll go ahead and finish clearing. Are you good for a minute longer? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll okay. go stand up, like, in the garage. I got to do one more pass here, and then I'm just going to try to... I don't know what I'm going to do on the front spot. This is literally the first time we've had snow worthy of clearing. Right. The last snow is in October. The driveway had never stuck. So we didn't have this. And thing. we didn't have it yet. We That's got nervous recorded. by it. Yeah. So we decided to buy it at the time. Yeah. So if you guys haven't bought yours yet and you're in a northern climate, you might want to get on it. By the way, this is the Titan uh, SP240. And then let me share the visibility from here. You can see uh, my, my head is about here. Okay. So I'm trying to give you guys a fair representation. I'm six foot tall. This is the play from the, the seat. The seat is an air ride seat, or not an air ride, it's a spring ride seat you can adjust the tension but I can see right through there and see where the edge is so I'm gonna move it for you see see how it's moving I can definitely see where it is especially when it's folded in to either side and then what you can do is while you're pushing if I if I have a big curl going up against something and I need to switch directions I have enough power to flip to flip the whole pile of yeah, snow for sure and that you would have never been able to do that with the zero turn no um i would have been stuck for sure down there because it's slick on the road and the thing is i gotta go tend to the road too here shortly so that i don't cause like people to get stuck on the road because they have not plowed our road in fact right. i could plow the road um is that a bald eagle that is a bald eagle yeah is probably it? or Ooh, is I that don't a that no no it's an eagle i can see That's the white head eagle? Yeah. yeah you can tell because their wings look like a like an M when they flap it. Yeah, it's so definitely cool. an eagle. Cool. We definitely have a bald eagle flying over. Okay, so I'll watch you yep. do this front little section, but then if you go down to the road again, I'm going in. Okay, no, I understand. <laughs> and then um, you, I think it would be wise to show them parking, so if you just pay attention, oh, and then okay. we'll show them how we park it. Yeah, okay. So. That's All right, thanks for watching, thanks guys. Thanks for the warm-up. Okay, so he's going to do this one last little spot down here at the end of our runway extension. Hold on. The white is, it's super bright out here, so hopefully you can see okay. that be helpful though like then you just end up knocking them over yeah I know. so anyway all right cool we'll get this done the nice thing about this poly blade and being able to get it cleaned off right away even though it's still currently snowing if the sun comes out, it's going to warm up our driveway enough that it's going to melt a lot of this off. So it is nice to get it off of here, get the majority of it off of here, even if we have a little bit more snow this afternoon. I don't think it's supposed to snow all day, so if it would warm up, this would probably be all we would have to do for the day. If he's even able to get up there and get the sidewalk over there, which is nice because our garbage camp is over there. I haven't mentioned this, he's having way too much fun doing this. <laughs> Which I'm super thankful for because this is not really in my wheelhouse. Okay, I think he's gonna switch directions and work on this here in front of like this I'm gonna try and stay out of the way. Hopefully he won't forget that the gutter is still down. Once he gets a little spot clear, I can, because he just made me a wall, I'll run up there and put the gutter up if I can get to it.
usually once we get into winter winter that stays up but it did rain it rained all day yesterday and then changed over to snow um maybe around 11 or so Okay, I'm gonna run up here real quick. Or probably not run, but he plowed right up to that's where our gutter comes out and then it goes across. This is what he's talking about. This is really thick, heavy snow. I'm gonna pause it for a second, guys. Okay. Okay, so the first time I really ripped in right here, of course it's in the front yard. Yep. Which sucks. I think this is why people that are plowing don't typically wear shorts. Shorts, possibly. Probably. Could, could be. Not sure. But anyway, all I'm gonna do is just put it back, <laughs> replace your divots, right? And then I'm gonna stomp on it. At least you wore shoes. I did. Well, I didn't tie them. Nope. So that I don't think that the uh, the grass is gonna mine too much because yeah. it's gonna be covered in water for a couple of months. But that is kind of annoying. But this is what I was talking about, guys. Look at this. Yeah. Look how, this is like, this is like, look how wet it is. It's like ice now. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. This is the worst stuff to have to clear because it's extremely heavy. Hey, we can get a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> is that cheating? Oh, okay. Well, I knew you'd be able to get it. Zip tie. Okay. And that's good enough. I just didn't want to tear that up. Right. And I'll just err on the safe side. But look, I mean, look at the walls pushing. It's just, yeah. it's doing it like it's nothing. And then I gouged, I gouged into the ground there. I don't even, it doesn't even feel like it's wearing. That's crazy. That's awesome. So weird too, because this stuff looks like blue inside. Yeah, it does. I was noticing like that. A, like, a, like a glacier. Like a glacier. <laughs> Okay, I'm freezing. Okay. I gotta get back in. I should have put gloves on for that stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna go back here. Out of the wind a little bit so you don't have to listen to the wind. I don't have to yell at you the whole time. Okay. And we'll watch him do this little section up here. That's going to be tricky to figure out how we can do our do the sidewalk and not get. He said I did it again. Not get the grass. Not get the grass and then not get the rocks that are on the other side of the sidewalk.
Yeah, it's gonna, that's what I was thinking. Take a little chunk. That is really heavy snow. He really just has this little trapezoid here left for the most part to be done with the main drive. you guys get to see us install it if you want to watch we'll have that at the end of the video obviously for our little stretch of sidewalk we're probably not going to be able to use this very well because without any sort of a shoe especially on the right side we're going to have a, a high propensity to dig it in which is not good that's kind of a bummer uh the smaller blade they have one that's uh, i think it's 72 or 76 inches or something like that that might be better if you know you've got a big spot that you want to clear like that um, we also have a smaller 42 inch or 40, what is that other one? 48 on the inch. side, yeah. Yeah, we have one on the zero turn if we really wanted to do it all. But a small area like that might be better to just, you know, drive up and down and pack the snow and then I can clear it. It's just crazy because if you do the right angle, it basically just follows the contour of the, gra the ground. And uh, because we have our concrete installed right, there's wash away from it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Except these areas where it's flat, and this thing pivots just enough that it wants to dig in on the right side. So we could also install some shoes and that would resolve that problem. Even just on this side would all, we don't really need it on the other side because we're never gonna clear the other direction. Right. So really happy with it so far. Um, also this is, I'll show you real quick how we tuck this in. When we're parking it, just cause then I don't have to, you guys saw I had to actuate it two different directions while I was running. We can bring this thing all the way upside down. It's not it, is it? Nope. So that's just stop. And you can lay that on the ground if you want. I typically just uh, let it relax onto the concrete floor, but this stuff has texture on it. It'll stretch the paint. Yeah. That's smooth in there. So really, really happy with it. The tractor has tons of power. Um, we have, you run out of traction, you know, when you're really, 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 really got a big, I mean, the push has to be about twice as tall as the bulldozer blade. And by the way, this is marketed as a bulldozer. I'm not sure exactly why they do that. And I can see why you would use it as a bulldozer after having pushed into the grass a couple <laughs> of times. Uh, but that being said, this coyote has been great. We love it. Everything we've used it for, it's done a great job. The install on this thing was much easier than other installs we've done. Yeah. And yet it was still a little bit of work. We went between our different hydraulic fittings at the end. We waffled a little bit and we'll show you why at the very end of the video. But stick around, come back for more. We know that the uh, agricultural stuff doesn't quite get as much traction as the RC stuff, but it's a big part of our lives and we wanna share it. We know a lot of people are looking for this information and we were those people. Uh, just a few short years ago, we were trying to learn all this stuff. So YouTube is a great 
place to learn about these very expensive pieces of machinery that you don't want to have to buy twice. And we still are. I mean, we don't, we yep. didn't grow up doing this. We don't, we've learned all this as we've gone. Yep. So we're figuring it out too. That's right. So thanks for watching guys. My camera crew is freezing, so I'm gonna let her go come back for more. Our stay for the build or the install and uh, hydraulic install and all that good stuff. And maybe you'll pick up something you need to know before you go ahead and order. And by the way, if you're gonna order that thing, there's links in the description below. You will greatly help our channel by buying equipment like this from the links. And we really appreciate you coming back to watch another video. Okay. Okay, guys. If we die, <laughs> tell our kids we love them. <laughs> we are gonna we're gonna clear a little bit more of this road. Um, if the DOT is watching, I claim ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to show you guys that this thing works so good. So normally we don't run with two people like this, and yes, we are both seat belted and legally uh, on legal seats. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're in high gear. I've got it down, all the way floating. And then I'm just going to give it all, you know, not all she's got, but you guys see how nice that does. And I don't want to get too close to the edge because I'm kind of in an awkward position myself. <laughs> you can see I'm going, I have no idea how fast, probably not very fast, but if you had a really long drive, you could totally clear the, you could clear your driveway without any problems at all. Um, Visibility is really good. I'm super comfortable right now. Um, Obviously, if the DOT shows up, I'm going to have to like quickly drive away and hide in my garage. But, um, because this is, I don't, I don't think they probably like me clearing the road like this. But that's okay, because uh, they didn't clear it. So, I'm going to try to kind of crank the blade over as we go. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm in high gear, so it's going to be a little bit weird the way this works. Okay, you see how I'm slipping? That's okay, because I'm going to go to the ditch with this load, okay? Okay. And then I can flip the blade super fast. And then I'm going to get down here and just cut. And if you don't float, your wheels are going to lift on you, okay? It's a little easier without two people in here. It's not really cab designed for two. But that's okay. I mean, as long as you like the person you're with and they don't smell too bad. <laughs> But you can see I'm not really pushing it too hard. You see I'm at 2,200 RPMs and I could go up higher and my gas pedal's about 50% pressure. But um, I'm getting up close to this ravine here so I don't exactly want to die. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of favor toward the middle of the road because I'm a chicken. You fill in the blank. <laughs> Show them down there as we go by. That's our creek right now, it's so cool. That's where it feeds the back. Okay, that's one of the two tributaries. Let's go up to the next. Do you want to go up and turn around at the cemetery? Not really. Okay, well then we'll turn here. <laughs> this this looks like a good place, non-suspecting home. Okay, so we're also in high gear. So I'm going to go to medium gear. Medium gear seems to work better. My camera crew is very much all up in my business <laughs> right now. And uh, not in a good way. <laughs> So as you can see, it's very easy to control the, the tractor. If you can do this with two people, then uh, you can do it with one person very comfortable. But it's nice and warm in here, isn't it? It is. So obviously we can uh, take the pressure off and then lift the blade. You'll see it's totally clean there. So there's nothing they got dragged. And then one thing I plan to do before I take it inside is just give her a couple of racks back and forth. And then obviously, roll it under and just make sure I don't have like tons and tons of water and stuff on there give it a couple of kicks which is probably real easy on everything I'm sure but you can see you can get that thing through a tight hole like this or like this because it, it's not as wide as it would have otherwise been so that's one way you can park too is you can lift this up and you can go through a doorway and that might be worth considering but I think we tried that didn't we yeah so we'll show you parking. Okay, I'm gonna kick it out of four wheel drive because we're pretty much where we need to be. Um, there it goes. This this tractor is way easier to get in and out of four wheel drive than the 1025R was. You kind of feel it just like you do with other small tractors. And you can see a little bit of wear on that blade, but guys, that's like, that's a third of a mile I just cleared on a 
uh, pseudo public highway. <laughs> Are you parking with me in here? Am I? Yeah. Why? Is that a problem? Do you not want to be here with me when I park? It's just super comfortable. Well, how about this? We'll <laughs> pause and reset so my camera crew can get off. So here's the little bit of wear. It like actually just like peels off. No, hardly any at all. That's crazy. Okay, so we're gonna back in the park. Okay. I'll stay out here where it's more comfortable in the snow. So him being able to come out straight worked just fine with the height of the tractor. And again, that wasn't a crazy amount of snow. We definitely get more, but it wasn't nothing either for you know, where we are. So he has to watch a lot of stuff in our in our three car garage. The zero turn is in there and then obviously his truck is in there and then shelves of stuff. We've got it pretty well packed full. But like he said at the beginning, being able to have our tractor in the garage is it's a huge thing for us right now. We don't currently have an outbuilding and even if we do it would still be nice to have our snow clearing equipment attached to our house so that he doesn't have to get all geared up to go to another garage to get the tractor to clear snow. Um, he normally probably won't do it in shorts. I don't know. He probably will. <laughs> but he can, you know, he can just run out when we're in between things and clear quick and not have to get all geared up to do that. So it is really nice to have it in the garage or if we need to go out and do a project when it's not snowing then it's here and it's available so he got it tilted all the way through the door and then he can just kind of relax it into position That's all she wrote. So I think, you know, we, I think I took about 40 minutes of video footage before. So that was us talking a little bit. It'll be half that once he kind of gets his pattern figured out and can oh, that clear does. and well, that will take is, 20 minutes. I won't necessarily have to do that much clearing. Right. And this does fit. I could go back in there further, but it's a lot easier for me to get in around my truck right now. Yeah. And we just run a little 1500 watt heater. And we have a timer and then we have a remote control so we just turn it on and run it for a couple i don't know like four hours or something like that after we're done which is a lot of power but with insulated doors and everything that'll really help to keep the equipment from getting really beat up from the the weather yep um so anyway that's that's it guys uh, you can see i was probably being a little bit more careful than usual because i didn't want to crash on camera because that's always fun uh the coyote dk 6010 se HSE, which is the hydrostatic model. Um, love it. Very good. Uh, the worst part of that whole transaction was trying to squeeze two humans in there to film. <laughs> but it was, I'm really glad we did it. Um, it was so cool on that virgin snow. And I was going and it was just shooting the curl. The only thing I learned about this thing is that I may want to do a flap on the top. Mm. If I'm going to actually honestly try to clear the snow on the, on the main road, which I, I know I probably shouldn't be doing that, but I don't really care. Well, clear it, so. and if it was an emergency or something we needed yep. to get out, you could That's easily. exactly right. And the, by the way, that path is wide enough that you could get a vehicle down. So like if I just needed to quickly clear it so I could get to work and, uh, and then just deal with it later, that's also possible. Um, so I don't know if you guys noticed, but I had the driveway clear in basically two passes. Mm -hmm. It's because we have a wide swath for turning trailers in that it takes a lot longer because I have to do two or three passes as a result. 
when I get this figured out, this part is probably going to take me, I'm guessing I can do the whole thing in like five to 10 minutes conservatively. And that's, you know, it'll take longer to warm the tractor up. So I'll start the tractor when I'm getting ready to go to work and come out and clear the snow right before I leave and should be good to go. Yeah. So very happy with the product. A little bit disappointed about the gouginess. Um, the wear and tear on this ultra high molecular weight uh, cutting edge is really seems to be pretty good. Um, it is a nice clean cut. I mean, yeah, I'm really surprised because typically when you use a rubber blade, um, it's it's it. You think it's going to act like a squeegee, but it doesn't. Although it does kind of buff it like a squeegee. You'll get a lot of chattering. This slides along like butter. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's even better than steel because steel drags worse. Um, and I was scared to death about the float position on this. I didn't know if we were going to run into problems with that. Um, and I felt like it was no problem at all. Once you put it in float, you were good. Now, if you didn't quite get it knocked into float, you were just pushed down all the way and you were, you thought you were good. That's when you'd go to make a turn and it would kind of slip on you and you'd go forward instead of cutting to make the turn. Um, so make sure you lock it all the way into the float setting. And of course you might have a different tractor with two knobs or whatever. Um, if you don't have a float setting, you're going to have a really hard time. Oh, shoot. There's the DOT now. No, I don't think it is. That's, <laughs> that's, a... that's the county. <laughs> He's like, wow, they cleared really good. Oh, it is, it is the county. <laughs> the county. <laughs> Maybe we should go close the door yeah, quick. Yeah, we should close the door quickly. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a great tractor. And then we did end up putting on the flat face, which you'll see at the end. If you want to watch kind of the reasons for that, it's great. By the way, under pressure, you can hook it up. But my understanding is it's really hard to release them um, when it's pressurized. So if I wanted to take this off tonight, then I would want to break the pressure by moving the knob. The other thing I noticed is that the knobs, the knobs to control this hydraulic are in the back here and they're kind of down by your butt and like the edge of the chair. And so it is a little bit challenging to get to. I may have to come up with like a stick or something that just brings it out so I can go from stick to stick quicker. Um, and a lot of you guys are going to have a hydraulic diverter. So you might have a button or a knob that you press and then when you actuate it's going to actuate that so that would actually be ideal in an application like this and we could always do a diverter back there and uh it would give us that flexibility to do the controls that way um and then just so you know i mean for what it's worth i don't know if this helps you guys make your decisions but we did end up clearing the drive or the uh the area in front of the house mm -hmm. uh, where we tracked was really really hard like duh to, to clear. Now this isn't quite as heavy as my pickup truck, which would be about like 9,000 pounds. This thing's probably about, I call it like four and a half thousand pounds. So, and it's got a lot more, um, it's got a, a lot lower uh, PSI on the tires. So you are still gonna make the tracks really hard. And when it's wet, clumpy snow like this, there's nothing you can do. A footprint is hard to get yeah. off of there. It was like shoveling so, concrete. And I gouged over here off camera. I was just pushing. And then we had snow drifted up in an angle up against the house. Yeah, we did so this we with the shovel that. too. So, but you're not going to typically do this with a tractor. Even no. with my zero turn, we couldn't really do this area. It just was impractical because you would slip off the edge of the hill. But look how beautiful that is. Yeah, it's super pretty. That's so pretty. And the stillness. Of course, there's not much stillness when I'm on a video. <laughs> we built a windbreak out of some of the hay for now. So we'll see how that goes. And we need to get it tarped. I know some of you guys are cringing looking at our hay not being tarped. But at this point, I'm not super worried about it. If somebody really needs hay, they're gonna buy the hay regardless. Um, and that's what winter's for. <laughs> so anyway, um, there you have it guys. Stow it upside down like this. It's gonna allow it to drain off. And then when I'm done, I may park it right there like I've been parking it. And then I can just drive out. Even if I miss my target, I can still get in here with my quick decouples. And then I usually just tuck the hose under here so the weather kind of sits on top of it. So really happy with the way everything worked. Um, I don't think there was anything that I could have expected better out of it. It was, it was a pretty good chunk of change, but if you start looking, this is the best value on the internet. Yep. And unless I missed something, and please tell me if I did, because this thing was way cheaper than anything else. Yep. And it worked just as good. And what we had like minor like shipping scratches and stuff, which is Titan always takes care of us if we have issues like that, uh, which they don't all take care of you, believe me. Um, so very, very happy with the service so far. Also, it does come with a flat face, uh, one male, one female. And so if you're buying that pair, you can buy that from the links in the description below. We'll link to this and to the agricultural style, which mm -hmm. is like a- uh, Like a poppet style. A, a poppet style pioneer, a mm -hmm. PT, whatever it is. And we, we had a, a three eighths inch hose here. And it goes to, a, was that a three quarter? 
I can't remember. I can't we remember. talk about it at the yep. end. So if you guys are concerned about the hydraulics, we go into great detail at the end of the video. It's like the last 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you guys have questions or comments, put it in a link below in the description. Or excuse me, check the link. We might answer some of them. Also, this cutting edge, it's the same material, but that's mm -hmm. black, which means it's probably been recycled. It's going to wear and tear the same. I really, really wanted to give you guys a review of this. And so I apologize if you guys are watching um, the John Deere Z655 Zero Turn Plow, and I never actually showed that. It's not because I was trying to screw you guys around. It's just because we ended up getting this machine um, before we actually had a chance to film that. So we've only had one snow. I'll try at some point to go ahead and get a video of that, but I'm not probably gonna put my chains on. The rubber chains and uh, this thing are not hard to put on, but it's still like, you know, time. And then if you put the chains on, you have to shim out the wheels. So it's probably gonna take me three hours to do that. So I'm probably not gonna set that up. When I say three hours, I'm start to finish. Um, well, shoot, it probably took me three hours to put it on from the beginning. I'd say maybe an hour, hour and a half, something yeah, like that. Yeah, second By the time I sit down, take the wheels off, put the, um, I, I use washers to space out everything. So this is going to be the easier thing for us. The yeah. other thing is that thing does stick out further, so it might interfere with the way my blade lays on the ground. Yeah. But again, that would stick out at an angle like this. And so we could probably make it work. Mm -hmm. This thing just sticks out far and you push your feet on it. If you haven't seen that video series, just look on the John Deere Zero uh, the the Z655 series and we'll have videos about the the way this works We did actually get a video of it, but it was before we put on the cutting edge mm -hmm. So it's gonna cut cleaner like a steel edge and yes This is a steel edge that's on it and it does come with that So if you ever decide to buy that this guy does a really good work. I'm not an affiliate um, I just bought it because it was way cheap like what do we end up having about like 600 bucks? In yeah, this? I think so and then about like hundred and twenty bucks I don't remember the chains the rubber chains were the the meal ticket for us because mm -hmm. we didn't want to tear up our driveway. Yep. So you yep. get a brand new uh, concrete drive. You don't want to tear it up. If you're on gravel, who cares? But if you're on gravel, you're not going to be doing this. No. So just don't waste your time. You got to be on pavement. But it really worked good last year. It worked really good, and it was fun. I really enjoyed doing this. But I think I'm going to enjoy this um, similarly. I think this is still more fun because you're out playing in the snow. Um, but no, you also get stuck, and then you have to have something like this or a truck or a car to pull you out. Yeah. Because I did get stuck. A number of times. Now, granted, I was clearing snow in the grass. So anyway, we're yes. not going to go any further into that detail. But this is this is all I have for you today. Really happy with the tractor so far. Everything we've done with it has been above and beyond our expectations, with the exception of just minor gripes, like, you know, the control is just a little bit further over than I want. But you're going to have that with any machine. It doesn't matter what machine. I just bring that up in case it's a big factor for somebody. Head space, elbow space. I mean, for God's sakes, we had two average size adults tangled up in there for your very pleasure and no it's not on that side <laughs> not on not for ours at all but yes come back for more i promise i won't be wearing shorts outside unless i absolutely can get away with it youtube is brian phillips today we have something new and exciting it's definitely not a radio controlled aircraft which i know is going to really make some of you happy we've got this new coyote tractor here and it's a dk 6010 se hst but the loader always blocks that, so I always gotta look and make sure I'm saying it right. The KL5521, of course, is the loader. As you can see, we've got this Titan attachments uh, carriage with forks. We've got the 48 inch forks, and then we got this Titan adapter that goes from Quick Tack, which is this style here, to John Deere style with the two different pin sizes. So you can go all the way up to, I believe, like the 5 series mm -hmm. um, and below. So we've been using that, it's been working phenomenally. We had to modify ours because there was a little mistake on it, but they took care of us on it. Now we've got another Titan attachment toy. We've done the drum over, that was ridiculous, but it's actually worked great once we got through the ridiculousness. Now we have this new 94 inch dozer blade and snow plow. So we're getting this um, to take care of our farmland. And so we wanted to show you the unpacking, okay? So you'll notice that Somebody already started the unpacking, which just, that stuff really irritates me, but I think it's got a little bit less to do with Titan and a little bit more to do with the fact that every single different style of shipping is going to end up having a certain amount of demolition that happens on the way to your residence, similar to this, what you see here my cat is playing with. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just going to untie 
these twisty ties and I have a 5 8 inch a 5 8 inch socket there and this thing is called the SP240 94 inch QT hydraulic snow blade which is actually stands for quick tack mm -hmm. of course quick tack is going to be like what's used on in our case, a coyote tractor for attachment points on the loader, or if you have a skid steer. Now this is actually a skid steer design, and therefore it's got a male and female coupler on the hydraulic line. So that's one of the things that I want to get to here in just a couple minutes, but my camera crew is going to give me my tool. We have printed out the manual. Hopefully we can figure everything out relatively easy. But we figured you guys might enjoy seeing an unboxing of a product like this. It's a fairly expensive toy. When I say toy, I mean utility item that's going to be used to clear snow and also do dirt work. Um, I don't know if we're going to have to cut in roads or if we're going to have to take out and do dirt work. You see the cat just went over there. That'll be helpful. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. <laughs> Luckily, there's a concave surface, so. Yep. That's Callie. That's one of our cats. She is the most feisty girl. And then, uh... She's the most feisty, period. Well, she... And it's funny because Pouncer's our boy. And Pouncer finds the mouse, the mouse and then she eats the mice. Yep. Which is a little bit weird. <laughs> but whatever. I'm not sure if it's a big problem. So, alright. This, this bar came down on ours. We had one more bar here that was supposed to support the metal. And this sort of thing irritates me. I know it sounds stupid, but I might want to use this box for something else. Big surprise. <laughs> so I like them to come in one piece so that I can use them for something else. Otherwise, it's just, you know, they're fairly useless otherwise. They did use nice hardware. They used grade 8 bolts, mm -hmm. but they don't use nylocks, and they don't have a locking nut. So it's kind of like they're never going to stay right. all the way through the trip, you know? Well, and while you're undoing this, we could mention that this same snowplow comes in three different sizes, I think. Well, it comes in two sizes and with and without hydraulic. Yes. We opted for the hydraulic uh, angling, and the angling is 28 degrees either direction. Yep. Which our hope is we can still configure it the way we've got it configured here. Uh, typically, we would have two vehicles parked here and a very tight squeeze on the coyote here. Mm -hmm. Um, we've elaborated when we did the wet tires. I don't know if you guys watched that, but our clearance on our garage door is very close. So now the clearance on the width is going to be also very close or bad. We may not actually be able to fit this in. Um, we're not sure what we're going to do if that happens. These metal frames are sometimes painful. But that one bolt on this upright. I know it's still oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just getting this lifted up actually. Okay. I want to try lay it on top of the frame and that way I can undo this. Okay. My camera crew's hands are full so she can't help catch it. But I'm just going to basically stretch it on here and then that'll keep it held up while I undo the last bolt. Okay. So unpacking these things can sometimes be a little bit daunting. Uh, if you have a tractor that's going on, then you probably have a tractor that you can use to get some of this stuff done. But if you don't have forks, it's a lot harder. If you guys haven't considered seriously getting forks, it's one of the most useful items that we have. We leave the forks on all the time, and we only put the bucket on when we need the bucket. Mm -hmm. Because the forks are constantly useful. And then those fork pockets, we also use them for our spears. And so we have two 49 inch spears that we run on the front and 49 inch spears that we use on the back to move the hay. Okay, so that has to go down. Presumably that pallet's in great shape. As you can see here, that's pretty typical rotten pallets. I don't know if they just destroyed the pallet at the freight company and then they just decided to uh, give us the garbage one they had. Look how horrible well, the pallet was. It was also the forklift operator's first day. Yeah, the camera crew had to unload this herself because the lift gate service came with a... Uh, how do we say this password? <laughs> I don't know if you let's can. Just, let's just say that it was a senior, it was a senior uh, official of the company. And that's all I'm going to say. 
to avoid making somebody mad. <laughs> and he didn't exactly have what it took to get it off of there. Nope. Okay, so this is this is basically the model number and stuff. Yep. So if you look for that, obviously we're gonna link to this. If you think about buying this thing, follow the link, it'll help support our channel. We've had pretty good luck with Titan. I get frustrated with shipping because I work in shipping companies all the time and I see the amounts of damage that goes, I cannot believe how much stuff gets destroyed. And I mean, this is nothing. This is literally nothing. I mean, I see buckets that come in on pallets and there is no pallet left. Um, and they're just moving around the buckets and it's just, it's just kind of disrespectful to the customer if you ask me. Um, but I work on the scales that measure all that stuff. So I guess that's a different point of view from my perspective. And a lot of times in the freight environment, you got, sh you know, shifting around. And of course this comes from some other place. Okay, so that top part of the frame, see how that's kind of idling right now? Okay, so I don't know if that is a good sign or a bad sign, but it's definitely allowed to move free. I wasn't sure. I don't know if that means that there is air in the hydraulics right now, or if it's full and it's just allowed to idle somehow. I'm not sure how that works. But it looks like this is the direction it's gonna need to tip back, and then we'll drive into it. So there was, at one point, there was some bubble wrap, like that's going to do anything. <laughs> Super. A single layer of bubble wrap to prevent the finish from getting marred. But if you look at this finish, it's actually pretty, it's pretty thick. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's powder coat. It looks like paint. It's a nice finish. It's black. It should look nice on the tractor. But I would say that in this case, I like the way it looks. It's got a nice big reflective decal here. And then a reflector here. Looks like this one pivots a little bit. It does not have, they want this to be used on a 540, uh, 540 rotations per minute PTO shaft. I'm not really sure exactly how hmm. that pertains to this hydraulic feature. Yeah, but not so much. Also, there's bumpers here. Let's show the people the bumpers. These bumpers have to be rotated around. So I don't exactly know how that's going to go. But those things have to be rotated around, right? Can't yes, be. for shipping, to ease of shipping. So I think backwards. what happens is this whole thing pivots. Oh, it's probably super heavy. And then of course, you got serial numbers and build dates, and then the hoses. Let's show the people what the hoses look like now, because we're gonna have to get those kind of untangled here. Where is that thing? Up in that little triangle. Where's the other end of it? No. Okay, there we go. So this is what I was talking about, guys. The hydraulic fittings that come on this are designed for a skid steer attachment, not necessarily a tractor. And that's fine. We knew that going in. It's not exactly a, a misery. But you can see that's pretty big. And then of course you got your male and female counterparts, so you could technically put those together, okay? But you can also take this off and then you can get your hoses made. So when we get a hose made, because this is obviously not gonna reach the back of our tractor, and our hookups for us are gonna be on the back. So let's show people where our hookups are gonna be real quick. Okay. So we're gonna have to go along this frame, probably to here I'm guessing, I'm not sure though, and we may have to jump up here and follow along and then kind of run like midway down, probably mm -hmm. here. And that way when the arm or tissue, it's gonna go up like this, we'll still be able to reach. And then our hookups are back here, so. And this is not uncommon. On this Coyote, we've got one that's detent and one that's spring. And we paid, I think it was only like 300 bucks extra for the additional, um, I believe we added a detent and it came with the spring, but they both feel like detent to me. The difference between spring and detent SCVs or selective control valves is that one is gonna lock into position and stay there. 
So like if you want to start start the flow and it just goes through the circuit and it just stays going, okay? So like on a log splitter or something that's got controls out here. Um, and then a spring would be you'd hold it back and then when you let go, it just goes back to neutral. And then when you hold it the other way, it goes the opposite direction. When you let go, it goes to neutral. With a detent, you can choose whichever direction it's gonna lock into position. And then there's a hybrid spring and detent, but I don't know what they call that. And I've seen them in really big, you know, like Cat 980Gs and stuff where you hold back the stick and it locks in position until the boom gets to the top and then it stops. Um, I think we do have a lock on the downstroke on this joystick on that selective control valve. So anyway, so now that we have this more or less unpacked, I have to probably undo one more piece just because this bent over piece, I'm a little concerned I'm gonna get, I'm gonna damage something if I flop this down over that way. Mm. Yeah, so I'll possibly. Go ahead and see if I can get that one to come off. This one's kind of, I wonder if the threads got mixed up a little bit because it, it's wanting to come off of there pretty hard. And I know they didn't use locking. I know they didn't use locking hardware. So I don't know. I might take a second and we'll get that off and come right back. Okay. Okay. So we got the one weird bent piece of steel out of there. And then we noticed that this is, uh, this foot is designed to uh, keep keep the thing from tipping over when it's detached from your loader bucket. And so I'm just gonna flip that around and you can see inside of here, there's just a little bit of surface rust and stuff, but it's got a pretty good finish on it. It's not perfect, but you don't really expect perfection on stuff like that just because you're not gonna get it. But then I'm trying to figure out, it looks like you can pin this in in two positions. See, there's position number one, so that's gonna store it flat on the ground. And then position number two must be right here, maybe? Just a little bit more. Or is it supposed to be upside down when you're using it? Maybe. Because I don't know. That looks like it's pretty low. See, the cutting blade goes way down. This is the cutting blade. They don't even talk about the cutting blade on the website. But there is most definitely, hey, look, there's the hardware that fell out. Oh, there it is. That's weird. And that does look like a locking nut. But I don't know where the bolt is. If you see the bolt, keep it. Okay. So I'll give that to the camera crew. But yeah, my plans are to not probably use the cutting blade. I'm going to either get a UMWH, uh, an ultra high molecular weight blade so that we don't have to put steel up along the, the fresh concrete, or I'm going to use rubber, which I'm not sure rubber is going to work as good on this application. So we'll see. But you can see this thing kind of wants to bind a little bit. So I don't know. I guess you could technically put it either way. But if you tie it there, you'd still be up out of the way. But you see, this whole set is what I'm trying to reach to. Mm -hmm. So if I can get it to go all the way. I don't think you're going to make it with the... It doesn't the... feel like it's going to go. Uh-uh. It feels like it, the bend is just a little bit premature to reach that. And see, this pin, it's a nice pin. Mm -hmm. Aluminum, it's got the pin like this. But I think for us, because we're tipping it up right now, I think I want to go ahead and put it in here. And we'll see, I think it wants to go this way, like that. So when you get ready to tip this up out of the storage mode, you need something to catch it so it doesn't tip over on the ground on you. So this is what's gonna help catch it. So in this case, the other thing is we're up higher because we're on top of the pallet and we've got just a little bit of thickness of steel. So my hope is we can just lay it over. We might be able to run that loader attachment pretty flat. We might just be able to pick it up and just go up with it. That'd be ideal. It's always awkward trying to get these things out of the pallets. Yeah. Or out of the crates, just because it's just weird. It's something you don't do very often. Now there's one other pivot point, and I think that's I think that's what these things are right here. But I'm still not sure. They they give instructions about it on the the drawings. And it's almost like once you pick it up, see there's a pivot point here that allows the whole bucket to tip. But I think this spring, that is a huge spring. Yes, it is. I don't know if once we pick this up, if this whole thing is going to lean away and that's going to allow us to undo this and flip it around so that you've got that bumper in here. But I guess we're going to have to pick it up to find out. I think so. Okay, so our next step is going to be to move around the tractor. So we're probably going to do that next and come right back. So 
So he is going to go drop the forks outside real quick. And we're going to see if we can pick this up just using the loader attachment. But we might need the forks if we can't get it, if we can't get it picked up. So he's just going to put them up here. He's gonna hop out or yeah, okay. So unlock, unlock, and then I'll show you how this whole thing comes apart. We were gonna just film, just do this and then come back, but we want you to see how easy it is to do this stuff. So right now, the only John Deere style attachment we have is our four carriage so for the time being we're just going to leave that quick attach plate on the forks and we can just pick up the whole thing use the quick attach and it's all just kind of one unit but if we end up with another John Deere implement at some point then we have that adapter plate so that was kind of our whole reason behind that process so I'm going to run around here real quick yeah, see, he's hoping it's level enough. into place and then see if he can lift it up. If I have to help him, I might have to pause, but we'll see how it comes out of this. Great. Open up. So that's what I was going to say is all we got to do now is figure out how high we have to go to get these things to release. There's a hex drive and then a, a regular nut on the bottom. And so once we figure that out, gosh, I don't even know what size that is. I might actually have it right here. Nah, it's bigger. So we'll have to dig into the tools a little bit to get that size bigger than a quarter inch. That'd be kind of nice if it was not. So the other thing is, I think these technically are supposed to be mounted up right, but I'm not sure, um, as an indication of the edge of your blade. And then this doesn't come with snow sticks and it doesn't come with shoes. So if you're wanting shoes, you're gonna have to add your own shoes. And by the way, we're gonna, meet, we're gonna have this picked up immediately, so I should be able to just take this thing off. Oh, right. I forgot we were going to, I didn't realize we were going to be able to do that. I didn't I think it was going to work that easy. And I don't know, the way it was shipped might be okay, the direction it was shipped, but I'm not 100% certain. Show the people at home. That's the way it lines up. Because you remember how we couldn't get it in the other way? Mm-hmm. This might be the correct way. For storage? Yeah, I'd, well, for running storage. I mean, oh, you could right. obviously take it off, totally, too. Yep. And then once it's off, it's out of your way. But I don't think that's going to be a big problem. Okay. So I guess at this point, it's time to just lift it all the way out of the frame. We can get the frame out of the way. Um, or we could lay it back on the ground, put the forks on, and then move all this crap and park it. So do you want to show them how easy it is to hook the forks back up since we're going to do that anyway? Well, we are. Yeah, let's do that. Because I'm going to go ahead and lift this out 
and then turn it so we can look at it and see if those bumpers are easy to adjust. Okay. is a little bit wider than our old blade. That thing is big. It is. So I was trying to Oh, look at this. Scratches all over it. See that? Yeah. Big scratches all over the front. Is it scratched or there's not like a protective transport? Uh, it's security? scratched. I just about got cut by that. Great. So, why is it scratched? Probably because the that, that was broken. So, I guess we'll have to deal with that, but what are you going to do? At least you got somebody to call to deal with it. If it was not supported in the middle like this, it wouldn't be all scratched up. Mm. I.e. if it wasn't on top of a pallet unnecessarily, then that wouldn't be scratched up. But yeah, so we gotta figure out how to get this thing relaxed down so we can adjust these uh, stops. I don't know exactly what we gotta do if we can just hold it. Yeah, it moves like that. Mm -hmm. So then of course when you hit something, it'll be allowed to run into it. And then it'll be allowed to go forward. See? Yep. So that shouldn't be too hard. And then there's your full 28 degrees of, of adjustment. So that goes, that's a pretty good amount of adjustment. Mm -hmm. And then you can see these hoses, they don't talk at all about the length of the hoses at all anywhere. So I'm thinking if they... If they end up coming up like this probably you're not gonna have a real easy time getting to your loader hookups. In most cases, you're not even gonna reach to where your loader hooks up. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a tractor, yep. but again, this is a skid steer design. So don't be surprised when it behaves like a skid steer. So in that case, we're gonna have to get hoses, but now we can measure for hose length, which is probably gonna be our next step because we have to try to go get hoses made. Let's show them the other direction. It's supposed to be the same both ways. See this? You're going to have to leave some slack for that too. Mm, because as yeah. this thing moves, I think we need to reposition this. See this camera crew? See this? You're blocking all your light. Why don't you stand over there? This is going to have to get rotated somehow so that it can be on the other side. And maybe we can get the hydraulic lines to come out the center here. Mm. And then that'll help keep them protected when it's being stowed. So anyway, that's about it. It looks like they put uh, 3,121 PSI uh, hoses. So that's that's plenty good for what we're doing. All right, we'll come back when we figure out how we can get this thing angled. Okay, so we got stuff out of the way and we're back now. I'm just using a crescent wrench. I don't even know what size this thing is. It's a grade 8.8, .8, I believe, which is kind of weird. So I am not currently having to hold this Allen style hex drive. I'm just loosening this and it seems to be loosening. Feels like it's some sort of an ISO mount or like a shock mount because you don't have to hold both sides. It just holds for you. Okay, so once that's out, oh yeah. This holds that side on, the bubber, the rubber, the bubber. Oh, that was loose. <laughs> and then was this, that was, was loose. That side. So then all we have to do is basically push this down. Yep. Okay. So that's in the correct position. Get that started. Oh, that's pretty easy. 
This is literally the only step in the, the assembly. assembly. See, I've got it pulled down just with my body weight, oh. so it's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta trade your spot so I can get at this. Yeah, there really isn't much assembly on this thing. We wanted to show you the unpackaging mostly on this product because I don't know, it just seems like, you know, like the scratches on this, you know, you're pretty much gonna have that with every piece of equipment you buy online. I don't know how to avoid it. I've never gotten something that didn't have some scratches on it. Yep. But that just annoys me because it's it's like so deep. Like these scratches go all the way into the steel. Yeah. And that kind of irritates me. But again, not a whole lot you can do about it at this point. We're gonna have to touch it up. It's kind of ripping my gloves. But then this cutting blade, we didn't know that there was actually a separate cutting blade on it. So here in a minute, I'm gonna take this off and just make sure we don't run into another problem. Okay, there we go. They came with good hardware at least because uh, every piece of hardware, even the stuff that was missing, <laughs> was grade eight. Um, if they would have used a, a locking washer on that, then it wouldn't have been lost, but they didn't, so not sure why. This comes with a washer and a lock washer as well as the bolt. So that's an 8.8. .8. I'm pretty sure it's metric. And then this thing here, kind of the same thing. This side over here isn't quite as problematic because it's already been pushed down by the other one. Mm -hmm. So I can just hold this down and get the whole line. Do you want to show them back here? Yeah. You see this? You just got to get this thing to line up in that hole. It's really not too hard. It's a little bit slotted or it's just a little bit bigger, really. It's not actually slotted. So that's all the more you got to do. Technically, that's all you have to do. At that point, you could you could go to plow like right away. Um, I'm still a little bit weirded out by the fact that the cylinder is moving free because that means it's probably empty. And that means that when we run this thing, we're gonna have to prime it and the hoses with a lot of oil. So we're gonna have to probably get a gallon of oil or maybe more, I don't know. It always seems like you need more than you think you're gonna need. Hmm. Um, yeah. Because each and every foot of that hose that we run from our reservoir is going to come out into this, make it run, and then when we decouple it, it's going to stay full of fluid. So we're going to have to fill that up. Okay, so we got that thing torqued down. That's plenty good. So now when you hit something, it's allowed to break away and actually have a pretty significant amount of movement. Um, I think... There's an adjustment right here, okay? So you can adjust this bolt. See how it's threaded all the way up to there? So you can adjust the tension on the breakaway. You see this? This is threaded all the way to here, yep. okay? So that means that right now, it's probably on its most slack setting. So when you hit something like a chunk of ice or whatever, it's gonna break away. But once you tighten this spring up, to almost double its current strength, then it would work a little bit better as a bulldozer. Um, because obviously with a bulldozer, you don't want it to break away quite as easy. You might want to break away with like a root or something like that. But uh, the other thing is, let's go ahead and measure for the people at home how big this cutting edge is. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna look at the spacing of the holes. So you guys probably remember at the end of the season, I was able to show this little plow configuration worked great, really liked it. But being that we have a cab that's gonna be heated and air conditioned, I said, I'm not gonna to wanna to come out here and freeze my butt off and clear snow when I can do it like this. So it's just, I'm just a realist. So this cutting blade is, and they don't talk about this in the manual at all. Do they? Uh, no, I don't believe so. That's four and three quarters inch tall, okay? four and three quarters inch tall by, we're looking at three eighths of an inch thick, okay? By, this is supposed to be 94 inches, but we'll see. 93, 93, 94. No, this is 94 and five eighths. 94 and five eighths from the center, okay? So now the spacing on the hole I'm guessing is probably not even because that'd be way too easy. <laughs> We're in from the edge here, four and an eighth inches. 
four and a quarter, pretty close. And then let's see if these things are on center. So it looks like we're 10 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter, and then it stops. And then the pattern restarts over here. So that could be some metric equivalent, of course. I mean, it absolutely is. Right. So that's 10 and a quarter. That's 10 and a quarter. I'm trying to give you as good a measurement as I can. That's 10 and a quarter, maybe 10 and 3 eighths. Just call it 10 and a quarter. And then the gap in between these is four and three quarters. So sure. that might be some sort of a standard. I don't know enough about clouds to be able to speak intelligently about it. That's why I'm doing a video about it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So once this thing comes off, you got to be mindful that there is, show them underneath. Yep. There is pretty good reinforcing. So the cutting blade, of course, is sacrificial. But in my case, on my other plows, there was more of a sandwich here. And so I was able to hold a rubber strip and give it a lot of support. In this case, I don't think it's gonna work quite as good. So if I was gonna do the rubber strip, I would need to basically come out here and put some sort of a huge washer or something, and then put the rubber so it's big and it reaches down just below. And that gives it something to, to hold. Now, when you drag, then you lose that strength. We might just try it with this. I'm not sure. I'm really inclined to just get an ultra high molecular weight uh, blade and probably go up to like three quarters of an inch or half an inch because that stuff just wears really nicely and it won't damage the concrete at all. Um, reasons you would do that is because A, you have a new concrete driveway and B, you wanna keep it looking nice. C, you won't leave rust stains where you park if you park it outside. In our case, we're gonna try our best to park it in here. And uh, C, when you do scrape and you do catch an edge, you're gonna break concrete. So if you have some heaving during the winter and you lift an edge, you're more likely to catch it. Now, the ultra high molecular weight will probably give before the concrete, but then you'll damage that relatively expensive piece. That little piece was 60 bucks that went on this. This is a, is this a 60 inch blade? We um, have a review on this thing and it yeah. is awesome. If you guys have a little zero turn, the guy that makes these, he's a YouTuber. He does really nice work. This is 47 and a half inches. I think it qualifies as a 47 inch plow. And I really like it. And I did that UMWH blade on there and I haven't had a chance to use it because then of course it stopped snowing. So hopefully this year, nobody will have to use this because I've now reviewed it. <laughs> Good luck. If you want to buy one of these, um, we will obviously show you what it looks like when it's working. The hydraulics are going to be really specific to everybody's machine. But now that we have good lighting, let's just show you what we're talking about. We have these two lines and I thought about taking the whole cylinder off and just running to the store with it. And then I could go get my hoses made or go get the adapters to make my hoses. Okay. So once I take this off, see like this is, this is male to female. So you could hypothetically, I think you can hook those together. Yeah. See like that. So that's, I wonder if it's going to move now. Yeah, it still moves, which is weird. It seems like that would be, if it was full of fluid, I, I wouldn't think it would move like that. What other measurements do you think we need to show to people? Like how wide it is compared to the wheels? Because the wheelbase on this compared to the, the width of the machine, that was why we ended up with this wider one. It was well, value than the 79 inch. and then part of the reason we went with this one is we wanted to make sure that when it was angled all the way, that we were still wider. So I'll run this tape to demonstrate. Of course, I turn my wheels. Here, camera crew, grab that. And we'll just line this up so where, that you can see what we're talking about. Where am I lining up? Those narrow wheels, that's the outside wheel. So you can see we have a good six, eight inches past. So if you're making a turn to the left and you've got it angled to the right, like if your driveway takes a turn to the left and you're trying to push it to the right side, then you're still gonna have a plow covering your tracks, which is nice. Now let's, right. we'll jump over and do that on the other side. So with it plowing the debris or the snow to the left side, now let's go ahead and pull this. This is just a quick, anybody who's doing this probably already knows this, you need to go over just a hair. This way? 
go over toward that side, more to the reflector. That's probably about right there. Okay. Okay. So you can see we've got there again about the same amount, which makes sense because it's 28 degrees. Um, so you've got a good, now I could get a pretty good eye on that. You've got probably a good eight inches of ground space that you're catching before your tires. Now, mm -hmm. if you're making a sharp turn, you know, you're gonna potentially miss a little bit. And then you're gonna have tracks that you have to go and clear. So that's not necessarily fun. Now, if you did a 79 inch on this, the width, the wheelbase on this machine is, uh, why don't we just give you an approximate so you know what we're talking about. The wheelbase on this is, let's call it 68 inches wide, okay? Mm -hmm. So if we got 79 inches wide on a blade, it seems like, yeah, you should be totally fine with that. But one of the things that we were struggling with when we were making our decision to buy this was, first of all, that one happened to be out of stock, and this one wasn't. And this one was just a better value because we were like a little over 100 bucks more. So we ended up going with this, and uh, you know, really, if you get right down to it, worst case scenario, I could cut this thing down, okay? I'm not real excited about it. I don't want to do that. I want to make this work, but that door is what we're up against. Yeah. That door. This door. That door, which is a 10-foot door. Right? Eight foot door. Eight foot door? It's an eight foot door. Yeah, because it's eight foot tall, so it's square. It's it's about 97 and a half inches, so it's a little bit over eight feet wide. Yep. So how wide is that? 94 and uh, something. Yeah, but that's with it sideways. So when you go to No, an angle, you measured length, you measured end to end. Or you're saying? When it's at an angle, it's narrower. Yeah. So you can go Well, okay, like I see but I'm probably going to back up the tractor. When we have the forks on, we pull in. And yep. It works nicely. Well, and you need to be able to clear a path out so that you don't because uh, of the hit height, the top. The height the issue, because there's a little bump at the top center of this thing. Yep. And that little bump actually kind of pushes down a little bit. But I think it has to do with where there's a recirculate and some air filters. So if something were to give, it's, I mean, the siding is probably not going to give. That thing's going to give, which would suck too. But, um, you know, if something's going to give, I'd rather it be that thing. Yeah. So that being said, this is the way it looks. It looks like we're going to be able to park. We'll try to give you guys a clip of it pulling in and pulling out. And we're going to try to get you a clip of using it. But once we have the hydraulics hooked up, we'll go ahead and show you how fast it actuates and then how we routed our, our hoses, because that's something that might be helpful for some of you guys. Uh, the other thing is, if you're looking at taking this thing off, it's really not a super um, difficult thing because there's actually, let's see how bad it is. What? It, oh, the cylinder? That's like the whole cylinder? Yeah, like if we were going to take this whole cylinder off, it looks like we just have, oh geez, that thing is really stout. We just have to undo these, these pins. And I could actually replace that with linch pins if we knew we were going to be able to take it off for other reasons. Maybe if I had a better tool, it would be easier. There we go. Okay. I was just thinking if I could just take this whole thing off, it would make better sense to just go to the store with the whole dang thing. <laughs> the other thing is, I'd really like to be able to rotate this and then put that pointed toward the inside and then have these hoses jump out here and go out through here because then they're gonna have a nice little area of protection. Because there's ISO mounts here. Well, there you go. Careful, careful. That thing's moving. Okay. So, there you have it. The pin came out, which is what we wanted to happen. I just don't want it to fall. Yeah. So, that's simple. So, that's what we're going to do so we can take this into the store, the whole cylinder and ends and all. That's all that's holding it? Well, that's what holds the pin in. And then the pin is what takes the wear and tear, okay? So it goes like that, and that sandwiches the top and bottom of the cylinder. So then you would just do that on the one side or the other. See, it pivots from here, so we should be safe. Okay. Okay, and you see how it's allowed to come out? So since I didn't design this machine, and I don't wanna to have to redesign this machine beyond what we have to do to get the job done, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to write a letter like A, okay? I'm just going to write A, okay? That's going to remind me that the A sides go together. Oh, okay. It should be able to go technically either way, and it shouldn't have any major impact. Um, in fact, that might, 
That might be better because then it gets the, the hookups out here, but I don't know. We'll take a look at it because then the hoses could come in. See how there's holes here? Yeah. On the other side? Could they come right up there. there too? I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Something where it would give them more protection? I'm not sure. That's not a bad idea. I'm going to take this other one off though. And then so far so good, you know. What are you taking off? I'm taking off another pin so I can get the cylinder out. Is it going to fall on me? It's not going to fall on you. Okay. Now you know what's going to happen. It's just easier to get to this bottom one in oh. this case because the frame is up here. Yeah. So guys, if you're watching this and you're laughing and you're thinking these guys don't know what they're doing, <laughs> yep, you figured it True. out. You figured it out. Congratulations. But you know what? We're doing it. That's how you learn. Right? Hey, see this label? They got a label here and they didn't pull this backing off. I don't know why they do that. I've noticed that on a couple of different machines we've gotten. They leave um, this tape over the top of the decal over the set. Vinyl. Because yeah. now you get to do it, and now it's pretty and clean and not all scratched up. You mean like the like rest of it? Else. I know. Just for your pleasure. Take that. So anyway, we're going to fight this real quick for a second and come right back. Show you a point. Actually, it's coming out, so hold on. Okay. Wait. So that should release the whole cylinder then. It doesn't release the cylinder, it releases the pin. The pin holds the cylinder. Well, okay, this pin right. holds the other pin, then that pin holds the cylinder. Right. And so once you get that out, then you can take that to the store with you. Sure. It's a lot easier to do it that way than it is to try to just walk in there not knowing what you need. I mean, you could take the whole thing down to the store. I'm sure they would appreciate that. We just drive the tractor the store if you could drive it to the store yeah that, that would be fine it's kind of a long drive for us what is it like a 19 minute drive at like 60 miles an hour <laughs> yeah it might take you a while oh, i should have probably bent that pin a little bit more all right we'll, we? we'll keep on come right back when we get the pin hole okay so i got that one i should have just bent this a little bit straighter but i didn't and by the way you remember how i labeled that other side a a. I'm gonna label this one A. You from Minnesota? A. Or is that South Dakota? Huh? Is that South Dakota? Okay, so careful. Careful. Cylinder could fall. Yeah, so that came out real easy. Okay. okay. So then this one would be the other side, so that would make that instead of A, that'd be what? B? Nope. <laughs> Just kidding. It's nothing. We're just not going to lay it oh, on the okay. other side. So you see, if that's I would have just straightened question. this better, if I had just straightened that a little teeny bit more, then it would have been easier to get in. And to be honest with you, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a linchpin in there. So when we need to get in there and work on it, we just pull a linchpin and we're done. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to be watching for bushings. Okay. Okay. Yep, there's bushings. See? Here's a bushing. And there's two of them. Those are spacers that make up the difference in height on this ball joint on the end of the, the hydraulic cylinder and this opening that was manufactured, okay? Okay. So that goes, honestly, that, that would go back on here, okay? And then that'll keep all your equipment in proper position when you go to put it all back together. And then in true fashion, the A-hole will be settled on its own. Okay, so watch for the bushings. Hey, careful, I'm pivoting this. Worst case scenario, it would pivot like this, but I don't believe it does pivot like that. Which is the one thing I was concerned about on this machine is I'm not sure how it rotates. You see that, guys? You got those two rings. Those may be slightly different size, but I doubt it highly. They're probably exactly the same, okay? I know one of you is screaming at the screen, just measure it, Brian, I need to know what size that is. Don't ask me, do not text me and ask me. <laughs> That's one quarter inch wide. That's one sixteenth of an inch thick. 
and the diameter is, well, the circumference is one and, ooh, that's tough. I'd say it's one and three sixteenths diameter. Outside diameter, inside diameter is, let's call the inside diameter one inch. So if you need to know what that is in metric, you can go to www.google.com. Yeah, go. That thing. Go to that place. For you and they'll, techie wizards. they'll tell you in like milliseconds. Well, it depends on how slow your internet is. Okay, unless you're at our house, and then it'll be like moments at least. It will be moments <laughs> instead of milliseconds. Yep. And when we say moments, we mean up to 27 minutes. <laughs> There's nothing better than running a YouTube channel on slow internet. Yes. It makes for no frustration. Never. Ever. Okay, so we have those assemblies ready, and then the cylinder is free now. So if you bought this, you can buy this without the cylinder. But here's a good close look at the cylinder and the hoses. Okay. They managed to scratch the cylinder. That's always fun. Looks like there's some brass bushings here. These things are ball joints. Snap rings here, hold that ball joint in. That's pretty sweet. Oh, you know what this would be sweet for? What? A top link. I wonder if I could buy one of these for a top link and have a hydraulic top link. That'd be nice. Okay, so now we can take that to the store. And the other thing too is, if you look at this, this cylinder has the hoses coming out the same direction. And I still firmly believe that it'd be better if we could loosen this, but I don't know if that's gonna be allowed to spin around. So I guess we're gonna find mm. that out right now. We are. Where's the tool? Which one? Did you pause it? Nope. Okay. All right, so we're gonna try this for your viewing pleasure. Okay, now if this leaks oil everywhere, I want to get it on the con on the cardboard, okay? Okay, great. Ooh, I want to try to get a good angle. Mm, makes me nervous. Maybe I'm not going to mess with it. Maybe I'm not going to do that for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> it probably would have been easier to break that when it was on the machine, mm -hmm. just because it would hold steady. Yeah, but um. All right, the other thing we need to measure is how far we have to go for our hoses. So let's talk about our route real quick. Obviously, this thing is free to move both directions now, which is really nice. Does it pivot at all? That was the other question I couldn't answer online. It pivots a little teeny bit, and here's how you can tell where it pivots. Right here, when I say it pivots, it barely pivots. Look, there's a Zerk right there. There's a Zerk fitting, what the heck? Is that a Zerk? That is totally a Zerk. Mm, I think so. Yeah, so, so, seriously? Okay, so basically, there's a bolt here, and then there's a bolt there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then there's a Zerk here, and then there's an ISO mount here and here, which I believe is just a stop. So I don't know if you're supposed to be able to take that out, and then this thing can pivot up and down a little bit, but why would they ever have a Zerk there if they have this bolted together and you're supposed to leave that in? Because there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. You see that? One, two, three, four. And when those bolts are out, this whole thing would be allowed to actuate like this on this point. Can you turn the light on so they can see that? Here, I'm going to try to get them a good angle on this. Okay, so you guys see what I'm talking about. There's a grease circ, okay? So if there's a grease circ there, then they mean this whole bearing, this whole assembly should be allowed to pivot. So I don't know if you can just loosen these intentionally. There's one, two, and then where's the three and four? There's four, and then there's three, okay. So there's four of them. You can see what I'm talking about now. There's one, two, three and four. So when you undo that, then this whole assembly is allowed to rotate and follow the contours of your driveway or whatever it is you're trying to plow. My concern being 
is that this is all bolted together and they don't include anything about that in the instructions. And then of course there's ISO mounts, which are actually not ISO mounts because they're only bolted from the top. There's nothing right here. It's clear. So this is just a bumper. So if you were to undo those big bolts, this whole thing would be allowed to pivot, notwithstanding, you gotta shut that light off too. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, these bumpers don't leave much room. So once you get to moving, that would be allowed to pivot. But you know what else that's gonna do? That's gonna allow play on the cylinder. So you gotta be careful about that because that cylinder that's doing your angling is reaching out. You know what though? I think it's okay too because that's all part of this assembly. So it is allowed to move, okay? So yeah, so we could actually look into that and see if we can undo those four bolts. I don't see why you wouldn't be allowed to do that. If you know you're gonna have everything flat and true, it should be no big deal. But like on my machine here, when I float the controls, it's gonna be on the ground and it should just have the weight of the loader arms and then this pushing down onto the concrete. And as I plow, then that's what's gonna be used. And I can put downward force on it, but I wanna float. Mm -hmm. So my stick is gonna go all the way to the front and there's a locking position there. Okay, and that's true for most hydraulic uh, SCVs on, on attachments like this, or on tractors like this, or skid steers and things like this. But I'm just not sure why this isn't designed to pivot here out of the box. And it didn't any, and there was nothing in the instructions, I don't right? think so. Okay, and there are grease dirts here, so we're gonna wanna grease this too. Okay. Mm, so this pivot point here, mm -hmm. there's a grease dirt here and there's a grease dirt down here. Okay, so right here. Right there, okay? And then there's a grease dirt there. So that being said, you guys have gotten more out of this video than the manual will ever give you. Um, on our hydraulics, we have to come from here we have to come from here down. So when I say from here down, we got to go. Remember, you got to leave yourself a little bit of room for slack too. Oh, and one of my favorite features on this tractor with this machine on, I can let the three point down and I can move the stick back up. So as soon as it starts, it's going to go back up. Okay. So I want to run this from here down, but I want to make sure that when I do it, I do it in such a way that it gets out of the way. You see that moving part there? There's a couple of different places I could tie my lines to. Maybe you put like a hose clamp here or something like that. But then this, this is stationary, so I could actually hook onto the top of that. There's actually a hole here, look at this. See this? I could pass right there because this thing pivots, but it only pivots like that. So I could hook them and then run them up here and tie them onto this and then go straight through here. So let's call that whole operation two feet, and then two feet gets me to here. And then to get down to here, I'm another two feet. So we're at four feet, camera crew. Okay. Then to get out to the end here, we're gonna be adding to the four feet, we're gonna be adding, let's call this five feet. Okay. So that's nine feet so far. Actually, yep. we're, we're eight and a half feet. And then from this point here, we need to go all the way. Generally on this machine, you're gonna have it down on the ground, but you wanna make sure you can move it up and down because as soon as you put it over here, you're gonna rip those hydraulic lines off. Yep. So you gotta chase this path. So let's say we're gonna go up to this spot here. So we need to go another, that's three and a half feet. So we could call that four plus eight, right? Because three and a half plus eight and a half. So it'd be four plus four nine. Plus, no, if four you're... plus eight. Okay. Because I shared the halves. Okay, so, so 12. So four plus eight would be? 12. 12, okay. So now from there, we want to come out. So we're right here. You need to hold it. Got it. We're going to need to be, there's 15 to this point. And then from that point, we're getting really close to where it was going to reach on its own. Mm -hmm. So I would say, was that 15? Mm -hmm. 15 feet might be okay. And we could always take a little slack out there if we need it. Now, if we wanted to go all the way to the machine, so we got 15 to here. And then this, this actuates, you know, this 
pivoting effect is going to make for some ambiguity as to how long you need. You're going to have to have some slack. Yeah. So I would say that on something like that, geez, I really got caught there. There's four feet without any, without any slack and we're almost all the way sucked in here, as you can see. So I would say the minimum you're going to want to do, and then look, we could go right through here, right through here. Oh, see, we can come down and we can go right through here. And then that takes out this issue. Mm. Then that's not an issue because the way that it pivots, mm -hmm. you're going to be on the pivot point. So anytime you run a hydraulic line or a wire on a machine that has moving parts, you go to the pivot point if you can. And that's how you save your hydraulic length and you save your, um, any of the bends because the bends are always where you're going to rip stuff. And I do this for a living too. So it's part of my job, a small part, but it is, it's actually an important part. So anyway, so we're at 15 and then we add to get to this point here, we're going to go from 15 to four is going to be 19 to the cylinder. It's probably going to be another two. So I would say 20 feet would be safe. 20 feet would be safe. And we're going to have to creatively tie that. Now I right. don't really want to run hoses all the way up here because remember, like if we get another, another attachment, I kind of want to just have them tucked up here next to all these fittings. Oh, if you go over there, you can see what I'm talking about. I kind of want to tie them up here so that the hoses, when they're not in use for this application, they're just maybe tied off to some of this stuff. Hmm. And then that way, between seasonal changes, you don't have to undo the hose. The hose just becomes a fixture of the tractor. And then this becomes a fixture. Right. That's hooked to the tractor. Nice. Okay. That and then one, and we're just going to run the one, we have two sets of SCVs back there. So we're just going to run one set. So worst case scenario, we need 220 lines, 220 foot lines. Best case scenario, I would say that 15 should do it. And then we'll just have to tie our slack a little bit tighter if we're close. Okay. Um, I liked... I like the hoses going through this hole. That that worked pretty nice. And the other thing is, I want the cylinders, uh, I want the uh, inlets going to the top. Because if we put them down low, I think we're gonna run the risk of catching crap on them. Mm, okay. And by the way, yes, you can buy this exact item without the hydraulic angling cylinder. So if you've already got your own cylinder, the other thing I wanna show you is look at the top. There's a bolt pattern up here. This has got to be some sort of a standardized bolt pattern here. Because look at this. Okay, so I'm going to get real meticulous on this. We're going from 2 to 13 and 3 quarters. So right at the center of 2, let's go to the center of 1 to 12 and 3 quarters. So that would be 11 and 3 quarters here. So I don't know if that's a standard size, but you could do an extra top guard if you want to push a longer. I don't know if, what they call that but it looks like a tidal wave. There's a word for it. Oh. Anyway. Then also, there's not really anything to bolt to here on the side if you want to add wings, but there's definitely this gusset here would be super easy to modify into. You could drill into that and you could add your wings here. A lot of guys like using wings if they don't use as wide a plow because then if you hit a doorway or something like that, you won't rip it off. Uh, you'll definitely rip the door off with this thing. So the other thing is there's no sticks for vertical visibility. So the way I had hoped to accomplish that, if I'm going to add them later, would be to probably poke a couple of holes and then just zip tie some fiberglass um, poles like what we've got stuck in over here. So that'll, that'll be a super easy thing to do, some high visibility poles like that, nothing mm -hmm. special. So without further ado, we got to figure out what we're going to do for hoses now. We know we need two 15 footers and we know that we want them to be this size class or better. We just don't know what ends we need yet. And if we want to buy other stuff from Titan, this is what they're going to be providing with it. They're going to provide a male and a female because that's what's going to go on a skid steer. So if our objective is to continue doing business with Titan, it might behoove us to buy these adapters for the end of our lines. What do you think? Yeah, that might make sense. It's either that or we have to hook up hoses every time with a coupler. And I just don't think it's worth it for $50 or whatever we end up right. spending for. Well, maybe it's 50 bucks each. That would kind of suck. <sighs> but 
you know, it's a tractor. They're so does plowing snow. Plowing snow sucks really bad. It's actually fun when you have the right equipment. It just sucks when you're working harder than you have to and it's just like tedious work. Yeah. And it's, it's I don't want to say it's thankless because it's kind of fun to do at first, but then after the end of the season, you know, you're like, thank God it's over. Yeah. All right, guys, that's all you get. Hopefully this video helped you a lot because these were all the questions we had that we didn't have answered before we started this project. Um, also, if you're going to use, if you're going to decouple your hoses uh, from your loader, then obviously you're going to want to make sure that you have the right type of connections. These are for a skid steer. I do not think they're going to match your tractor. And then we also had these from another piece of Indian equipment that we haven't used yet. And I didn't know if this would couple. Uh, it does not look like it's the same no. style. That's Holmbury. So this one's actually a choice that we could use and it does look like it might, nah, see we would need to get adapters for that. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing you're gonna learn about hydraulic fittings. If you hope to get a hydraulic fitting that fits the first time, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck, you should be working for the manufacturers if you're that good. They never fit the first time. Anyway, that's about it guys. Thanks for looking at this with us. Uh, the Titan SP240. Um, like I said, we'll try to get you guys a short clip and we're just gonna sandwich it on the end. Or actually, we'll probably sandwich it on the beginning so you can see this thing operate. And I'm excited to see it operate myself, except that that means snow. Yeah. And we'll also get you guys a clip of running it in and out of the garage. And we'll try to get you a clip of clearing snow, but snow clearing is a tough thing because mm -hmm. when it snows, I'm going to work or whatever, or there's something I need. So I gotta go like when I need to go. So mm -hmm. snow filming that is tough. So the camera crew is camera crew sleeping. Is in bed. <laughs> That's why you don't get a lot of videos of me clearing snow. Yep. All right. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Definitely check the link. If you really want to help support our channel, buy from the links below. Buying an airplane is always appreciated. There's lots of them in other links, but we do the farm related stuff. We want you guys to consider buying these things. If you buy them from the links, you really do support us a lot. So we appreciate you doing that. If it behooves you come back for more, there's tons. There's huge amounts coming. What, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five boxes. And then I have like four orders. At least. Coming. So we have like 10 new items coming yeah. right now. And that doesn't even include the stuff I don't know about yet, which happens all the time. Usually about once every two weeks, I find out about something I didn't know about. And then it gets added to the queue. So my wonderful camera crew is super excited to film it for you. <laughs> all right, YouTube. So we got this thing running today. Um, I was able to get some hydraulic lines. We use 16 feet on this particular machine, which gets us right to here. And we'll show you our exact route. Basically what's going on is we have a quick decouple now. And we used what came with the machine. We pulled the one off and we put it on the other side. Okay, so that's our that's our pioneer connection that matches it's a pt one one half inch yes. so one half inch speaks to this part and this is one half inch as well and we ended up getting 4,000 psi line which is way overkill this is what came with the with the sp240 uh, as you can see we've gone through and touched up the paint in a bunch of spots these can be loosened there's a bushing on the top and the bottom with some rubber that's on the interior portion and then this is allowed to swivel. Once you're ready, you have to tighten that down or it makes it makes a seal by compressing this brass fitting here and here, okay? So this is not allowed to swivel while operating. This is the angles we came up with and it worked and we went back and forth millions of times trying to figure out where to do this. So there's a view and you'll notice, we'll give you a shot of it working. It relieves a lot of the pressure on the cable, but there is kind of a little bit that's right here that I didn't like, but you can't really do it any other way, otherwise you lose too much length. Okay, and then it comes down here and it's somewhat well protected, and then it continues on, and then we just kind of tied them together. And at some point, I will get another one of these SP, uh, or the PT one halves. So those are quick decouples, of course. And then I got some, some boots. 
that will go in there when we're not using it because our plans are to leave this hydraulic line installed pretty much all the time unless we have some crazy job that we're concerned about possibly losing you know something getting in there so we just pretty much followed the lines that were already there and this is an unfortunate spot because it's just no good way to do it because you end up being up against the glass but as this as this moves you don't run into a problem with the glass and we'll show you that later and then it doubles back of course we ended up getting heavier duty line we probably cut it down to three eighths it's not like super fast so we just followed and then we went i'll try to shine a light Okay, so then you can see I had one twist here. That's a filter, the one next to it. Back there is not a filter, that's just part of the body, uh, the case. Okay, so we had one twist up there and then we'll just take you around and with the light on, you can see we did a 90 here and the 90 gets us out and that leaves us access to our other SCV. And we just marked it so we knew where to line everything up. So this is a half inch hose, 16 feet long, okay? It's got a male end built in. Just got those at uh, Mills Fleet Farm. And I also was able to get them at uh, Tractor Supply Company. So you can see that's where our little twist was. Now there's a grease circ right there that allows you to grease this tool, which is nice. And as you can see, that's attached to the three-point lifting assembly. And then we're using this gray um, knob to run this SCV. So these things are allowed to move a little bit. We definitely went into great detail to make sure everything cleared. And so we're going to show you that coming right up. Okay, so we're starting the tractor just to show you how we we're able to get everything clear. All the way up. And then of course all the way down on a three points kind of a relative term. Because the ballast box doesn't go all the way underground. Okay. So you do have to think about that. You see where this stops? And it's no longer moving, but look how much more play there is. So you can go underground with most of these, okay? And then of course you want to make sure you're checking for leaks after you get it done and then you can see the clearance here is just fine we're not actually going to touch then okay so then we're going to give you guys uh the first look at how this runs so while I give you guys a look from up here in the belly of the beast. Okay, ready? No, it's the stick right here. It's that stick, the gray stick. Okay, try it. The other way. Okay, the other way. Just keep going back and forth. And so you can see how this works. Come on, keep going back and forth. So it's got a pretty good amount of movement and you can see right here, go full speed. See as this gets taut, you're going to notice that this is relieved right where it needs to be relieved. Go ahead. You guys see what I'm talking about there? We struggled with that for a long time trying to find a good spot. And then this thing will actually rotate when it gets to the end of stroke. See, it just rotates a little bit. But you're allowed to rotate. There's actually a coupling there. Stop. And as you can see in here, we just kind of pointed them at the front. That's what I wanted to share. That's really important. So it goes like this and it goes like that. 
So it's kind of pointed at a central point up here. And then I was able to do that to relieve the pressure on the machine, which is really nice. Okay, go ahead and run it again from this angle. Okay, keep going. And you can see how this, as this goes under load, it's gonna tighten up a little bit and move just a little bit. But we're in a protected area now, so we have some slack, okay? Then secondarily, we're safe here. We've got a pretty good amount of protection. Okay, now we're gonna show you from the driver's seat for a second. All right, guys, so we're in the, we're in the cab now. Actually, turn the lights on. You can see why I added those lights there, right there and there. It's because I wanna see the work I'm doing. And then, of course, these lights I tied in to cover some of my blind spots on the sides. So I'll close this door for noise reasons and this door for noise reasons. Okay. Cut that off. All right, so down. And then, of course, it'll engage the ground. So I want to kind of roll it up and just show you where all the, the hoses get protected. And yes, I can go all the way up and hit my ceiling, but I'm gonna roll it forward as we go, just so I don't hit the ceiling. And then I know that I won't hit. My camera crew is concerned I'm gonna hit the ceiling. Okay, so as you can see, we've got plenty of throw. And that's what you guys all have to do when you get this done, is you have to make sure your hoses are gonna reach. As you can see that slack there, you don't want to have your slack rip off when you collapse this all the way, okay? Okay, that's all the way. So that's about as good as you can get it, and it takes a lot of doing to come up with a perfect position where that's going to work. And then when we're ready to put the forks on, or the bucket, or whatever we need to do, we just go down here and unhook our couplers, and we're ready to rock and roll. So. I'm going to go up high so I can show you the pivoting again. Oh, and then let's show you the pivoting at an angle when you got it way up at an angle. And then this is the stick here. It's right here next to my side. Okay, so it's a detent, so I'll move it. Okay, so there you go. And there you go. And I'd actually like it to be opposite, but whatever. I'll get used to it. See, it's a detent. You got to stop it. pretty fast and I'm being kind of mean to it right now but uh, incidentally it reminds me I need to lubricate I need to lubricate there's a greaser here and on the bottom same place so let's go up at a weird angle and lower it almost all the way down okay so now when you're like at a weird angle like this can really see how much movement you get which is pretty cool and there's nothing worse than getting off of a machine to actually adjust your angle that's just not fun at all especially when it's freezing cold and you've got to adjust pins and stuff like that I'd rather have it idle and yes you can take the cylinder out and yes you can push snow and you can just depend on driving to actually manipulate the position of the blade so all right, we're going to drive a little bit and give you an outside shot. I got to watch the... Just bumps the weather strip like it does on the other side. Okay. Not sure how well we'll be able to see at night here. But I know we wanted to drive with it on. And I'm guessing he's going to see if he can get parked um, in the three car side. Going in the garage? Yeah, do you want to? Yeah, let's try going in the garage. Go open the three cars.
It's a little chilly. I'm gonna go, actually I'm gonna switch sides here real quick guys and get him as he's coming in and then when he gets close I'll run around the front so you can see how he's doing on width. And you might need to stay back here just to, cause he's gonna be really close. Sorry, I'm watching him and not the camera guys. Yep. Yep. So our biggest obstacle is the zero turn. Yep. Uh, with our 1025R, we could have them parked side by side and he was still able to get both out without having to move the other one. <laughs> this is the first time he's doing this. I think that he's backed in before, but obviously not with the plow on so I think I'm gonna run around to the front so you can see the width you just the eyes here nope you're fine so I'm gonna go out front real quick guys so you can see nope I'm watching. Sorry. I might have to pause so that I can talk to him. We'll see what he thinks when he comes out. It should, by measurement, fit, but he's not just backing straight in and straight out. And then we have to get two other vehicles in there <laughs> once this is in. Two more vehicles in there. He's gonna be a little back far enough to get. He's getting really close, but I don't know how much room he's got behind him. I think so. <laughs> oh jeez. Well? Oh, okay, he said, if, or if you can hear him yell, if he had the ballast box off, it would be a pretty good fit. So that's what he's running into on the back side of things. But he's in. Whew. We're gonna go this way. So you can see. Well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> you have to learn how to do that by yourself, you know. Well, I didn't think we would fit in the garage, let alone fit in the garage with a blade. What I hadn't anticipated is because I park at an angle, mm -hmm. the angled blade was almost exactly the full width of the doorway, yep. Ooh, which I hadn't anticipated. Now, that being said, I might almost be better off to just pull in forward because then I can run the loader up and over shelves and down. I mean, we can re-situate stuff a little bit, but it's, uh, it's bad. That's, if I back out, then I have to worry about the extra snow thickness. Mm -hmm. So really, I don't know. I'm going to have to be real creative. I'll have to figure out a method to angle the blade 
drive forward and then drop the blade and then angle it square and push the snow out. But normally there's not junk sitting there. Right, we have extra stuff in the way. But you are like within your I'm right. stall. I'm on the stall. I mean, I could get, well, and plus look. Yep, this, oh, yeah. This cleared, but that, that would move a little bit. And not only that, this doesn't need to be on here really for practical purposes. Right. Um, and I have toyed with the concept of having a, a back blade anyway as well just you know maybe i can do an ultra high molecular weight scraping blade up there and then i can do just like a carbide tip dragger back here and then i can really scrape ice when i need to so it's in it is this has met and it works 100 percent of our requirements so far mm -hmm. our new requirement that we didn't have earlier was that we have the umwh blade um, which I don't know why I didn't really think of that, but I do probably want to do that. Um, and if I don't do that, I may end up doing rubber. So rubber is just not very good at getting a very clean finish. You just never really totally get it clean. Steel works really good. And to be perfectly honest, if you're dragging along and pushing snow, you don't really leave a lot of marks. But if you park it on the driveway, you'll leave a mark. And when you leave a mark, it's very hard to get it off of there. We've heard that you can use baking soda and vinegar or vinegar. Mm -hmm. so, well, vinegar, vinegar, I know you've tried. Um, but I had a hard time with getting it to um, bubble up and not dry because you're supposed to let it soak for like 15 minutes. We have left our forks out on the ground mm -hmm. and it marked the ground. So that was no, no fun. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's fully functional, which mm -hmm. is really good because with the way that the installation went, it actually wasn't hard to install uh, the actual machine, but it was a lot of work to hook up the hydraulics. Now that that was partly just because of where our uh, spare hydraulic SCD is. But it was only about three hours total, maybe not even quite that long. And that was building all the connectors, running it, yeah. everything. And I we mean, don't know what we're doing. Too. No, that's what I'm saying. So, it wasn't that bad. I mean, all actually, the I kind of do know what I'm doing on running lines and hoses and things like that. But in terms of putting the couplers together, I mean, it's like something you do, unless you work on hydraulic systems all day, then you're going to do it like a couple, three, four times in a lifetime for the average person. Right. And if you're a farmer, you might do it a lot, but we're not, you know, that's not like our full-time gig. So we do technically, yeah, we're farmers, never mind. Mm -hmm. So that being said, guys, that's all you get until snow flies. When snow flies, we promise you, we will get you a video of it working. If we get an ultra high molecular weight cutting blade, which we're seriously considering, um, once I see the prices and I pick myself off the ground, which by the way, speaking of prices, we spent a, a little bit under $200 on all the fittings. So uh, between the hoses, and the fittings and all the little, you know, 90 degree angle pieces and the tape, you know, cause you need to have some pretty heavy duty thread tape. And then what else did I buy? Oh, we had to buy the, the couplers. Hose. The couplers the are couplers. pretty expensive. Yeah. I think, I thought I was surprised, but these little um, PT half inch, which would have been a pioneer style half inch, uh, they were way more reasonable than I thought. And the skid steer are like, really expensive yeah to the tune of you're going to spend over a hundred dollars for a pair of skid steer style but they are very nice with those flat faced you push them they go it's very quick it's very easy but you're talking 69 dollars for just the female side and then another something god awful amount for the male which i couldn't find so as a result i definitely want them to mimic what's here because when i get a new uh, implement, I want to have it match what my tractor has available yep. at its disposal. Um, now, that being said, when I'm done with this, um, additional, because like I said, I kept one set. This It came with a male and a female, and I took the female off and mounted it on our hose. Mm -hmm. So when I get, they just happen to be out of stock on the other Pioneer PT1 one half. So I'll replace that and then I'll have a male and a female. So later on in life someday, I may get another male and another female and I'll make a quick decouple adapter and I'll put the um, adapter so that I can just plug in there and then I can buy a skid steer attachment. Actually, I should need a male and female if I do skid steer. So like if I buy another fixture or another implement from 
Titan attachments that has the skid steer attachments, I can just put that decoupler on there. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And that'd be reasonably cheap because the Pioneer style was about 11 bucks, I think, for the male end. So 11 bucks times two, so 25 bucks, you know, you're going to be out the door ready to go. And then you can adapt between this and the skid steer style, which is cool. So anyway, that's all you get for tonight. Uh, one last look real quick, just to show them it does fit. That, actually, we have a lot of room in front Yeah, of you too. do. Now that you're I in. way in. Now, yeah, but you had to get that far in to clear to the pivot. edge of the door to pivot back. That was... Yeah, was so barely... the moral of the story is 79 inches would have been a lot easier to park, and it probably would have been a lot easier to do a lot of things. But what's going to be nice about this is that when I drive out there and I'm actually clearing the snow, it's going to be a lot easier to clear the snow because yeah. our driveway is like 14 feet wide back there, and then it's 40 feet wide at the entrance. Yep. So 40 feet wide means that if I'm 8 feet wide for all intents and purposes, what's 8 times 12? 90, 90 something, 96. So we're not quite eight feet, right? No. Eight times four would right. be 96, and this is 94. Yeah. So it's like eight feet, but if you're trying to clear a 14 foot swath, then it's gonna take you more than, you know, the exact number of passes too. Yep. But when I get good at it, then hopefully I'll be able to do just like the center, and then I can work my way so that I push things, you know, like over the hill instead of making a, a water dam over on the other side. Right. And I did love plowing with that zero turn. That thing was awesome. If you guys haven't seen the review, I definitely do a review. And the guy that makes those is on YouTube too, so you can check out his stuff. But that little tool, that was super cheap and really was nice. I think it was around 600 bucks or so. Um, yeah, it, like it was like 600-ish shipped. So it might've been like 500 bucks plus shipping. And getting a plow for 500 bucks shipped. And then I spent, I think, 50 bucks on that UMWH um, cutting blade. And then I spent probably another $20 on hardware because I had to get longer hardware. So yeah. all in, it's about 600 bucks, maybe a little bit more by the time it's all mounted up there and ready to go. So good solution if you have a zero turn that's a John Deere because he does John Deere uh, sizes. He does four or five different sizes. Mm. But this mm -hmm. thing was awesome. Titan did a good job on this frame and uh, design and shape. So I'm really excited to see it work. I'm also a little bit excited because I have that thing pulled all the way back. Like I'm, <clears throat> I'm tipped all the way back. I can go forward like crazy, but the thing is I'm tipped all the way back and it seems to be about right, which is kind of nice because when I'm running it in float, some people will opt to not have another control so they don't have the pitch axis anymore or the dump axis. They're just gonna have their lift so they can float and then they're gonna disconnect their bucket tip and they're gonna use that to actually run your, oh yeah, that mechanism. So that might not be a horrible option for you. And the other thing too is with your tractor or implement, well, in this case, it'd be a skid steer, you wanna be mindful of the angle that you end up at. You may have to figure out a way to shim it out so that you can get that proper angle. So we did not have that problem. So, but some people might. Any other thoughts? I hope you don't have to use it anytime soon. <clears throat> yeah, I, I wanna try it. Now. I know you do. But the thing is, I, <laughs> I'm excited to try it and I'm excited to do it in the warmth yep. of the cab. That's something we've never experienced. So I'm yeah. super excited about that. I think it'll be great. This Coyote, so far, really happy with it. Um, it's been, what the heck is that? That's so weird. What is that? I think it's just the, you remember when we put the Dawn dish detergent in there? It's just kind of a little bit pooped out and now it's got like a bunch of grass and stuff stuck into it. And it's like it frozen. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so I'm really excited to see this thing operate. We will definitely get you guys a clip and uh, hopefully you can make up your own minds. This is a super long video as usual. I mean, that's just what we do. If you don't mm -hmm. like long videos, you wouldn't be here now. Um, so if you think it should have been shorter, Leave in the comments what part you wanted to have cut out and, and we will take that into consideration. And uh, also, if you, <laughs> if you want to see information about a coyote, there's not that much out there, in my opinion. The only time you can find information about coyotes are from distributors and I'm not one of those. So I want to hear from other people that actually bought them with their own money and not somebody that's trying to sell it to me necessarily. Um, 
I mean, that's definitely got its time replaced, but in our case, we just want to share about this tractor, what we've done with this tractor, how we've gone about doing it, and then how you can copy if you like the ideas. Because when we entered John Deere, that was one of the best things of the John Deere uh, was that we could get online and find, you know, like 10 people had tried doing this thing or that. And it's really nice to be able to look online and find that. Whereas with this Coyote, they just, there's just not as many of them out there, but we are really happy with it so far. And we're like really surprised uh, that it's so much more economical because so far I'm finding it to be great mm -hmm. in like every aspect, except for the diesel tank, which is the only thing I definitively do not like about this tractor. It's a pain to, to fill the spout. So anyway, any other thoughts, camera crew? No. Okay, that's all you get tonight, guys. Uh, we will... If we get snow soon enough, we will add the snow to this video and you will have already seen it at the beginning. Otherwise, check back in and we will have it. If you haven't clicked the bell for notifications, definitely do that. Um, like and subscribe as usual. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Make comments below and uh, be nice to us. We're just please. redneck hicks. That right? aren't at all. Yeah, exactly. You have no idea what we're doing. Right. <laughs> That's that's the problem. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. Come back for more. Okay, so now that you've seen how we got the 94 inch snow plow, the SP250 installed, that's what it is. 240. 240. SP240. SP240 240 installed. We're going to show you one other feature that we found after the fact, as usual. We found these really nice connectors that come with dust caps on both sides for about 30 bucks shipped. For a set of two. For a set of two. And they have the poppet style, which is really nice. Okay, half inch MPT thread. And they're really strong. And, and they're actually easier to release than the Pioneer version were. And the reason we were looking at that is because we had a little teeny bit of leakage on this. That might be, you know, within the realm of normal. But we just said, you know what, we're gonna give this a shot and then we'll have a matching pair and it's actually quite a bit less expensive. So we're excited to try that. But we wanted to show you one of those, those came from Summit. So Summit Hydraulics. And as you can see, our garage is tight. We've showed you this before. I actually pulled my work truck out, which right now I've got a longer than usual work truck because of something that happened. I'm not gonna go into lots of detail. And I put down a piece of cardboard and I wanted to show you how I was parking this thing before we go into installing the UH, the ultra high molecular weight cutting edge, which we got from May West, May West, out of Minnesota, out of Minnesota. So we got this, it's American made as far as I can tell. I don't know if the raw materials are, but I know they cut it there. And they're a division of like some bigger industrial agricultural something company. But if you Google May West, it'll come up. So we are gonna unbox this part for you because it's such a strange thing. Um, obviously, shipping, in this case, a full eight feet would be 96 inches, right? I don't know, 96. We're 94 and a half, or 94 and five eighths to be specific. And they charge per lineal foot, okay? So basically, this is the way it came. Go to the end so they can see. It wasn't supposed to be tapered though. So if that works, then great. If not, they'll just have to send us another one. I wonder if they taper it more, like if that's standard and they do even more, because that doesn't look as extreme as what was in the picture. Well, they had vertical and horizontal application tapers. And so that is an ultra high molecular weight cutting edge. This is three quarter inch wide. They, they by six in our case, right? We mm -hmm. six. Yes. And the idea is that that slides along the concrete and then wears really slow. So we're going to measure it real quick just to kind of show how it works. And it doesn't damage if you have like new concrete. Yeah. It, it's nicer on the concrete because it slides along. And it gives you a cleaner cut. So that's exactly 94 inches long. And then it is exactly, ooh, it's not exactly. It's five and three quarters inches. Mm. So that's kind of a bummer. So we're gonna have to talk to them about that too, because it's definitely supposed to be six inches tall. So we will talk to them about that. And then the height, 
supposed to be three quarters of an inch thick. Hope it doesn't turn out to be a half an inch thick. Yeah. No, nope, it's three quarter. Okay. So not exactly dimensional lumber here. I'm expecting it to be six inches tall because that's what you're paying for. And that stuff is expensive, by the way. We had about a hundred bucks in that one piece. So I do expect it to be the right size. Now that angle might end up working out to be about right. So if it works out, then great. If not, then we'll talk to them. But for now, I want to show you the process to install that sort of thing. We've already installed one, but then it didn't snow. So last year we showed putting on a half inch by 48, which is over here mm -hmm. on the wall. So without further ado, I want to show you the process of how we park this thing because it has, it's big. <laughs> and we have a normal um, eight foot by eight foot tall. Eight foot tall is actually a little bit more than usual. But we have a square door and then we have a rectangular door. And we didn't want this door to be taller and we didn't want it to be like really weird wide because there's only steps you can go from like eight foot to 10 foot. And we didn't know if we wanted to have a 10 foot wide opening, although I would have done it in a heartbeat had anybody ever mentioned it. So, well, it would have made a bigger garage. Yeah. Which would have made the bigger door look okay. Truck, like you can pull a car in like this with regular mirrors. Yeah. As soon as you get a pickup truck, you're not getting into an eight foot door. So do yourself a favor and get a 10 foot door. If you're building a house, just don't even consider an eight foot door. Yep. And don't even think about doing three eight foot doors. Nope. Because if you ever, God forbid, get a truck, then you're not going to be able to pull in or a bigger SUV. So just take my word for it. Just get the 10 foot wide doors. You can thank me later. So, and it's, it's hardly any difference in cost. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you how we park this. If you want to kind of come Let me around go out. and show, yeah, you might get a better angle from okay. over there, but it's parked really weird. Yes. So we rolled this under. So the cutting edge is, is up. So this is tucked inside out onto itself. And then take note of the fact that we have just exactly the right number of inches of spare slack on the hoses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I cannot go any further on my tuck. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I can do this. And by the way, I did find something the camera crew hasn't seen yet. Oh, and great. You'll get to watch as I drive out. That's always comforting. Woo. If there's a creature in my garage, When he does it this way, then he can actually see really well. He can see the edges of the blade from inside the cab. So then he's able to see what his clearance is on the door. So he's out on the, what would be my right side. And then he can get the left side out. That works pretty good getting out too. So if you guys have a tractor that you want to have this wider size on, that's an eight foot door and that's a 94 inch blade at square. Okay, so if you perfectly square to it, if you're 94 inches, that's scary to drive out of, okay? Because your weather strip and everything is right there and it's not like this is going to give like a breakaway mirror on a car. So you're going to take out your trim, it's going to be dangerous and expensive. So what I did there was I basically put a vertical and I was able to manipulate it at an angle, which gets you the maximum clearance. And that worked out really nice. So keep in mind, I can't roll it any higher than this. Down low. Now you can go up high, but you wouldn't want to necessarily have to go up high. Right. So sorry, I was trying not to blind the camera through with the lights. But that works really super nice for getting through. So basically for now, I'm going to run my hydraulics so that the blade is centered and we're going to just park into the other stall just so it's easier to work and we'll just let you guys watch for enjoyment and you can laugh like that. <laughs> you 
have a full moon tonight, or I think it's almost full moon tonight too, so it's really bright out here. So he's going to park in there, hopefully next to my car. What? The other thing about this coyote is that I noticed that it always drains, the AC always drains. There's two drains over here and over here that drain the AC condenser, and there's almost always drips that come right off of it when I first pull the tractor out, and it freaks me out every time. Yes. Because I assume I have some huge hydraulic leak, so <laughs> if you get the coyote DK or the, uh, the CK or whatever, size you get that has a cab and it's got the air conditioning lines that drain back here then don't be freaked out find them know where they are and then you won't have to freak out because every time i drive out i see it and even now that i know what it is it still concerns me yeah bit. and then show them the moon i, I did it i just did when you were turning around okay, right. i don't know where you're going to get the best view of this because I'm not sure how he's going to pull in here. I might run in the garage so you can see him. Manipulate. So there he has a lot more room. Sorry, I'm watching my car and not the camera. This gives him a lot more space to work if he can be in on this side. And he doesn't have the ballast box on right now, so he's able to get in and he doesn't have to pull in as far. As you guys can see, this thing is really easy to get around. By the way, there is a little bit of play because the four holes that are on the inside of this mounting, they do have slotted holes. So it's allowed to play a little bit left and right, which is important. So basically without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing off and just show you how we adapt that blade to this machine. Notice that there's already washers here. Some of these machines don't come with washers and they come with tapered screws or tapered bolts. So what you want to do is if you do have taper bolts, you have to send in your bolt pattern to a company like May West and they will actually make the bolt pattern for you. What we're going to do is they suggested that we didn't need this. And normally I would take this off and I would use it to sandwich whatever material I have just to give it extra strength. But being that this is only five and three quarters inch tall instead of six, which is kind of irritating. I don't want to put screw holes down low like that so that it can stick down like that. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to flip it. So I'm going to put the holes in the center and then I'm just going to eliminate altogether this cutting blade. So that steel blade can be used for another project. And the easiest way I found to do it is to just literally lay that thing on the ground, go ahead and unbolt this, and then you can set it, center it, Mark it, drill your holes. It's super easy. Don't be afraid of it. This stuff lasts forever on the ground, but it's super easy to drill holes in. So you won't have any problems. So the first step, of course, is gonna be to break these free. And so we're gonna get the tools to do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we use just a regular impact. This is an 18 volt, it's nothing too big. We got a three quarter inch impact rated bit and we actually were able to loosen off the nuts. I think they might be metric because there's a little teeny bit of slop in there, but it was plenty good to loosen. And then same thing is true. Um, when I bite down on it with my tool, it's, it's just a little bit under three quarters of an inch, but I would say three quarter sizing would be about right. And then the hole itself, in case you guys are trying to figure out what size you need, um, the hole itself is well, we can measure the shaft of the bolt for you too, because I know this wasn't listed on the, mm. on the drawings that I recall. It may actually be in the exploited view diagram, but the length that they gave us all in shaft and all is uh, an inch and three quarters. Okay, inch and three quarters. But then with the washer in there, you're down a little bit. 
Now, what we did was we basically figured on three quarters of an inch and we had a quarter inch penetrated out the end of the bolt. So we knew we were gonna be okay because we were only a quarter inch thicker than the half inch uh, steel cutting edge. So we should be okay. And then it uh, looks like we're, I would say three eighths. I'm blocking the light there. Right. Sure. So we're right at, I'm gonna call that pretty close to three eighths. Actually, you know what? I rephrase that, half an inch. So the holes over here on the cutting edge are gonna be edge to edge. I would say when they drilled these, they were oh, it's a metric size, isn't it? Or it's a between size. It's not five eighths and it's not three quarters. So it's the in, in between. So what would that be? A, 11 sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> That's kind of a weird size, but whatever. I'm sure it's um, metric. There's definitely a little bit of slop in there, which gives you the ability to straighten things out because these things uh, tend to get beat up pretty bad. So it took me just a couple of minutes to do that. And then obviously you're gonna have the bolt, the one washer, and then they use nylocks. So that's always nice when they use nylocks like that, especially a thin nylock, that's really handy in this type of application. So you get really tall nylock and you get a lot longer hardware. So that being said, I cannot sandwich my steel and the cutting blade, um, the UHWM uh, cutting blade, unless I were to replace the bolts at least. So that's the case in point, you wanna keep that in mind because that hardware adds up. Um, this May West actually does sell hardware and I think they charge, was it like five bucks or something like that per? It might not have been quite that much, but it was- It was a, enough that you wouldn't wanna have to pay. It was a couple bucks a piece. It was, it was enough that yeah. you wouldn't wanna have to pay it. And so I just figured if I'm getting the right size, it won't matter. Some guys were saying that you needed an inch and a half for this application, and I just, I can't even imagine how long it's gonna to take to wear down an inch and a half blade on a residential application right. for all intents and purposes. Right. So, but if you were doing this on a commercial level, you may actually want that. So, just to show you, I left one that was tight so that I could show you. And of course, I'm gonna do this super crazy, dangerous thing and work on our knees. So, now that's loose and it's gonna to wanna to come off. So, had no problems at all. When I tighten these down, I'll tighten them with this and our plans are to go with maybe one more size up or one much bigger size so that we get a little bit bigger support mm -hmm. onto our UM, our UH, WM. U -H Ultra High Molecular. M -W. Thank you. I can never say I that. know, I can't either. So that would be way better, but I don't know if I have enough of these in stock. So yep. one way or another, what, what size are these? These are one uh, half inch. Yeah. I think they're one half inch opening. It says F436. So I think they're actually a one and one and three eighths inch. And then the gap in the middle is gonna be just a little over half. So that's what we're thinking about doing. We'll come back and give you guys a shot when we're tracing holes. Did you squish a giant spider with our snowplow? Did I? Why? Is that what's on the bottom of the snowplow? No, the, I don't think that's Or is that dirt? Bottom. I think it's just dirt. That's from the grass. Oh, Sorry, camera crew. Thank goodness. I okay. I didn't scare you like that. All I right. did squish a giant spider when I was pulling this out last time. Hmm. That makes you feel better. No, it does that. Okay. All right. All right. So basically what we did is we measured uh, this was five and three quarters. It's supposed to be six. So that's two and seven eighths. Um, so we just need to mark. We just traced, I just laid this on top of here, squared up the end so that they were even overlap. Cause this is about a 16th of an inch longer than our plastic, which we knew that going in. And part of the reason we did that was because we knew we had extra length here. We're nine, we're just under 94 and a half. So we're gonna protrude out the end just ever so slightly. So hardly any, but we didn't want any extra width because obviously our doorway is narrow. So we figured we would, you know, make up a little bit there because this is nine, 94 and 5 eighths and this is 94 and a half. Okay. So you can see I made a mark on there so I can transpose the mark super easy and I just mark the centers and then I'm just going to, I'm just basically going to make my, my marks. 
These don't need to be absolutely perfect, but the more perfect you get them, the easier it is to drill. In fact, it might be easier to just go ahead and start with a drill. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch bit to start, and then I have a step bit to get me to the exact right size, which is just enough to get the bolt through. But if you really wanna make your life easy, you go a couple sizes extra. But the more material you can keep on here, the more likelihood you'll have of keeping them around for a while. So we'll just double check this again. Yeah. Okay. Again, this is this is not like ultra precision stuff here. And that might be one good reason to pay Mae West to cut it for you, because this is a bit of a pain. If you don't have time, go for it. Well, if you don't have time and you're watching this video, I kind of doubt it. I, <laughs> I choose to uh, you have the time. <laughs> if you're watching this video, you have the time. And you said have them cut it for you, but you meant have them drill the holes. Yes. Like, obviously, they're going to cut it for you. but Yeah, they're going to cut it for you. Yep. They can also drill the holes. Yeah. But this is just, this is just so easy that most guys are going to want to just deal with it themselves because they never are quite exactly right on these machines anyway. And so that's the other thing too to keep in mind is that when you're drilling your holes, um, make sure you lay the cutting edge the way you want it laid. Okay, so like right now, this is gonna go like that and this came off the same orientation. Because mm. if you flip this upside down, you'll be fine. But if you flip it that way, <laughs> then your cutting edge may need to mount the other way to line up with all the holes because there is definitely not tight tolerances on the locations of those holes. Yep. You would think that they would be jigged in and exact, but they're, <laughs> they're really not. That would make it easy. Yeah, that'd be like way too easy for us as end users. We keep saying things like that, like we don't like Titan, but we keep buying their stuff and they're actually really good we do. stuff. You can't beat the price and the service has been really good and yep. the shipping has been really fast. And so, you know. Well, I mean, we've bought stuff from other places and had issues too. So, yeah, I mean, right. it's kind of all the same. But if, if you guys so. are thinking, oh, I can't do the holes. I can't drill those myself. I need to have some professional do it. Like, what? Really? But you're going to clear your own snow? Like, no. You can do it. It's super easy. This stuff cuts. You can see how easy it cuts. And you're like, that ain't going to last that long. Yes, it will. It is designed to wear slow. Mm -hmm. But it does cut easy, which is super nice. And so when you go to cut this stuff up, you always have a real easy time getting it milled, and you can get a nice mill. There, it is temperature sensitive as, as one thing I've learned too about it. And so if you do this, like when it's really hot, then the whole pattern might change just a little teeny bit because there's some shrinkage that happens. So a shrinkage is an age-old problem for... I was supposed, mostly for guys, so you want to deal with that at your leisure. I don't think shrinkage is ever a problem for girls. Let me tell you something. For, <laughs> well, it depends. Depends on who you're talking about. So. Hmm. I'll have that conversation later. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can talk about that on YouTube anymore. So we're going to cut these holes in at a quarter inch. Then we'll step them out, and we'll just make sure it works. Now, why don't we just finish it because we're so close. Yeah. We can get the first hole cut, and then we'll let you guys leave the rest to your imagination. And we looked, we priced a ton of this UHMW material. Um, yeah, and did. if if you're getting a smaller plow, like on our old 48-inch plow, you have a lot more options, I guess. Well, I felt like there was more options in the realm of the economy. Yeah. The thing too is that this is virgin. And, you know, I mean, generally, that's a good thing. I mean, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, you can get the once recycled or whatever they call it. Repurposed or reprocessed. Reprocessed. Depends on where you look. And they tend to be black or green. And I actually wanted it to be black. So, mm -hmm. um, my other blade is black and I really think it looks better. But to be honest with you, this will wear and you'll be able to see a little better when it's down getting close to the edge. Um, a steel blade is going to tend to bend, uh, to blend as you wear into it. So that's definitely not a desirable trade. So I've already marked this with black 
Barker just to help me with the uh, depth measurement. Mm. Okay, so anybody who's ever used the step bit knows that you'll have a tendency to cut and then have the little bumps and ridges. That might be okay for our application depending on how the screws go through. My guess is I'm gonna have to drill both sides. But like I said, once you're done drilling one side, you just turn around and do the other side. So here we go. A step bit, step bit definitely takes a little more work. So I'm walking it this time. You see what I'm talking about? Now mm -hmm. you can tell that ultra high molecular weight, a lot harder to drill, especially with a dull drill bit, which mm -hmm. tends to happen. I think part of it is I just don't have anything to push against. So that's the depth I need. And then we're gonna flip it over and hit it from the other side. Do you need to set up like a little yeah. Yeah, stand can... instead of your leg? You know what? My legs do just fine most of the time, but I'm oh. not sure because I mean... the stuff is kind of melting a little bit on me. And so I just wanna keep those holes centered. But see, my idea is once I get through, see, I, I need to go to the next size up. Yep. I was afraid that might happen and I'm not really too off put. So I'll have to go one more depth of plunge. Okay, there we go. Now I got a nice hole. Oop, still not quite there. And then we did find a bigger washer. I could force that through and I probably will. So once you get that, why don't we do the other side and we'll just show the people what it looks like on there. Okay. And we'll give them a shot at the very end. So we'll pause and get the other side done. Okay. Okay, so we got these tightened on, just kind of finger tight for now, just to verify everything looks good and to verify we look like we have a good reach. And this is good because we have lots of support here. And then we've just got this little bit that protrudes down. Obviously, it's going to wear some. But the thing is, as you put this on the ground, it's going to take this sharp point and it's actually going to have to it's going to have to basically work this tip flat depending on the angle that we run the blade okay so as you can see we have just a little bit left to get a, a proper bite on that nylock but what's going to happen is we're going to tighten this and it's going to suck into the plastic a little teeny bit and then that's going to take care of that obviously we have to take it right back off so we can finish the drilling and if you're thinking about trying to get away with less screws or less bolts, probably not a good idea because as you can see, there's not much lateral support there. The other thing too that's a little bit of a bummer is with this bevel, we're gonna catch snow here. But in our application, that's no big deal, camera crew. That's no big deal because we're gonna park it with the thing upside down and on the ground. Which would be nice. And then also I thought about this when I was looking at a plow go by today on the road. There are screw holes all the way along the top of this. And so you could mount the steel. Maybe you could put the steel up here. And then that steel would make, if you catch the snow and you're moving quick, you could keep it in the curl. Which would be nice. So I'm not sure if those holes line up with these holes. Um, there's two. There's two. Oh, maybe they do. Because there's one. Now there, there's a big gap. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to add some extra holes to that. Plus, that'd be like super heavy up there. Yeah. Um, what would be better is if you had some rubber, which I do have rubber. And that would be super nice. <laughs> so we can, we can mount the rubber up here. And then if you get a really big push of snow and it's wanting to shoot up over the top of the plow, it's going to stay down. My camera crew is rolling your eyes. If we have that much snow, I'm just going to cry and stay inside. No, you're not. You're going to smile as I clear the snow in my comfortable warm cab. <laughs> That's true. You I'm know. still going to stay inside. Yeah, you're going to stay inside. But uh, I'm going to laugh all the way to the end of the driveway back. Instead of sitting on the zero turn. Which, by the way, I love clearing the snow on the zero turn. It was super fun. It was like, it was way more fun than it was using the 1025R with a snow push, although that worked okay, it just was, you know, we only did that when it was like crazy snow. So this yeah. is gonna be way more appropriate and I don't think we're gonna get stuck like six or seven times per snow 
but yeah. I don't think we'll have that. All right, without further ado, we're gonna get this finished up and come back and give you a final look and show you how it is with all these pieces of hardware put together properly. Okay, so this is kind of loud, so sorry if I'm talking loud. I just want you guys to see what's gonna happen here. Um, so I'll actually do this from here so that you can watch from that side. And what's gonna happen is as I tighten this down, it's gonna come all the way flush face here. And so now we have that all the way through the nylon. So the nylon is actually holding the threads. So look over here. See how that's got a little bit of a mushroom to it or a concave shape. So we're holding in, we've got a nice big pad that's hanging on. So basically I just have to work my way down to make sure we don't have a big wave in it. And that's gonna hold this sucker on there really tight. And as you can see, if you look down there now, they're not tightened, but it's looking better. So we'll come back in like two minutes and show you the final job here. So as you can see, we've got that done. It's sucked in there nice and tight. Toit like a toyga. And it's a really good fit now. Yeah, you know, just the perfect amount of penetration. We didn't want to over penetrate because then there's just too much complaining. Mm -hmm. But it's nice and smooth. Like it's feels like a cutting, like a, like, a like a cutting board, except it's not because a cutting board is very weak. Okay. Trust me. I tried it. Oh yeah, this is food grade technically. So yeah, we tried cutting blade or cutting boards on our John Deere snow push. And then we ended up with uh, worn down cutting. Okay, so there you go, there you have it. So now our next and uh, final step is going to be to go ahead and set up the hydraulic decouplers for good and show you what that looks like. We've already done the couplers but now we just have to get them to match because we have one that's flat face and one that is not. Did you hear that pop? I did hear that pop. That was I interesting. No, I, I don't know if I just touched it and it moved, but yeah, it kind of freaked me out. But yeah, it's always exciting when you're working with loaders and hear a pop. So anyway, there you have it, guys. So this is going to catch snow for us. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I would have liked them to not have it beveled, but... Who knows? Maybe we're going to be glad that they beveled it. Um, the other thing, too, is you got to keep in mind, you can only go so much on a tractor. You can go way down underneath all the way upside down and to the point where you're, you could use this as a cutting edge backward. But the thing is, I can only go so far up without making some sort of a wedge that would go in here that would sort of split the difference. And that's going to add length to the machine. So at this point, this is what we're going to have, and we are really excited to see it work. I think it's going to work great, and we'll come right back with the hydraulic fittings here in a minute and show you how that looks. So as with any new machine with moving parts, you have to grease it. Yay. <laughs> so there's a greaser here. As you can see, I greased it because it's immediately starting to come out, which is always a good sign. Then, get off of there. I have the world's cheapest and crappiest grease gun here. I will not link to it because I don't wish that ill on anybody. Not and even my you worst of enemy. all people need a nice grease gun because yeah, you, would think. you hate it. So then there's also one down here, which is rather easy to get to, but we pumped like six and a half gallons in there, I mm -hmm. felt like. Yeah. So it's probably like all up inside of this cavity. <laughs> then this one was a real bear cat, okay? So this is a central pivot here. I don't know if you guys can see my pinky moving. There you go. So we greased that and it started coming out right away on that bearing. So that was good. Um, what we had to do is because of course the machine was off and we had the hydraulic pressure broken. I just had the camera crew lean on this and of course I moved the stick and we were able to kind of push that out of the way. Worked out really nice. But don't forget to grease your machine. Those are the three spots I know about. There could be more <laughs> that I don't know about. Um, I don't see a grease surf down here where it's allowed to pivot for the breakaway, mostly because it's not a normally moving part. It's kind of like does move, but it's not really going to move all the time. Um, and then I don't know, I didn't see any grease surfs around this shaft because it's a kind of a loose fitting. Uh, there's probably a good uh, 16th 
eighth to a sixteenth of an inch clearance around this. So show them that from a, a different angle. As, as you hit stuff, then that spring works. And then you can tighten this knot to increase the amount of pressure that's required for the breakaway. And that would take you from a snow plow setup to a plow setup or a bulldozer, bulldozer. setup. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, um, the only thing on this machine that I wanted that I didn't get was hydraulically actuated angles. Because I wanted it to tip um, with my loader bucket, go up and down with the loader up and down, and then I wanted the angling this way, but I also wanted to pivot this way under hydraulic pressure. But what I found was you can already kind of make that angle anyway by just manipulating the angle here with your bucket. So if you manipulate the angle here, you manipulate the angle that you engage the ground. So keep that in mind as you're making your decisions. Again, this is the SP240. We'll link to it at the bottom. If you wanna help us out, buy from the links below and you will actually help us out. So we appreciate that. These videos are kind of a pain to do, mostly for my camera crew. I can stand here and film stupid stuff like this all day, but you have to stand there and hold the camera, so. Instead of doing important things like making else, dinner. If you want to show sympathy <laughs> on my wonderful camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're done greasing, so we'll pause it and we'll come back with the hydraulic fittings. Okay, so just so you guys know, you can also get these flat-faced adapters, which are going to be, in my case, with the hoses here, uh, we're still half-inch uh, national pipe thread and half-inch national pipe thread. And you can get this pair for like around 38 bucks plus sales tax. On the Summit yeah, Hydraulics. Yeah, on the Summit side. So you can actually buy that. You can buy it in a three-quarter or a half-inch national pipe thread. We need half-inch, 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 half-inch in this case based on the way we built the hoses. And obviously, we need them to be female so you can screw in your hose. You can buy hoses with female ends, but it's pretty uncommon, and I would not recommend it because it's very it's unique. Um, you only almost always see that on machines. That are built because they have a hard pipe and then it goes to a female fitting and then hoses usually have a male to female or a male to male that's my experience so anyway just watch how nice this is um i i learned this after we made the decision to do what we did because like look there's act there's nothing for leakage that's nice okay now the reason that that is nice is because i literally have nothing to wipe off okay which is really nice um, obviously we already broke the pressure up front and then over here, I'm just going to show you the difference. Now this is the, this is the pioneer connector. And so we actually spent about the price that we were going to spend on the whole pair of them from summit. So we'll link to the summit pairs and, uh, we'll link to the summit singles and then we'll link to the summit. If you wanted to just get another pair of these and put them on, then anything you buy from Titan, that's going to be skid steer attachable is going to come with this style. So our thoughts are it might be easier to just get two ends that are like this, and I'm gonna show you that now. So when you break these, the first time I broke it, I lost a little bit of fluid. It wasn't a lot, but you see what I'm talking about? See that? There's just a little bit of fluid there, okay? So, I mean, it's not like a huge amount. It'd be like just whatever's between the tip of this and the end, so you can quickly wipe it off. And then in most farm applications, you know, people are not gonna care, but I'm just kind of a clean freak. And so that's just the way I am, okay? Kind of. You may be, okay, I'm a clean freak. So obviously we're gonna take this one off. We'll see if maybe the Summit ones are better. I'm kind of doubting they're gonna be a whole lot better. But when you take these things off, we happen to be in this kind of busy area. So my plan is to throw a piece of cardboard down here just to direct any oil that does get spilled. It's gonna, it's gonna weep a little bit of oil on the ground, but it's not gonna be that big a deal. So my hope is, see this end there? That's the Pioneer style. And then this is the Poppet style. So if you press that, there's no pressure on it. So that's gonna, that's gonna mean that as I press this, we're already over that side and we have no pressure in the circuit. So that makes it really easy to work on. And then when I unthread this, that's when we're gonna be vulnerable to oil getting everywhere. So I'm gonna to try to hold this higher and then put the new one on. And if I have to retape it, then that's gonna be kind of a pain. So we may actually just 
not film that aspect because it's not rocket science. Um, but the big thing is that you can get these fittings for way cheaper and we can show you what we're talking about. Now the big catch is that you have to have the right size for your right tractor, for your right machine. So in which case it might be nice to support the people to help you figure that out or you can support us, it's your call. So we'll come right back when we get these things on. Okay, so we got these connectors on from Summit and so far really happy with the way that they worked. It was every bit as easy as the Pioneer ones and uh, these are really nice, they're better dust covers and they came with the dust caps. They snap on, which is nice on both the male and the female end. Um, on the female end, that was a separate purchase. So really nice looking connectors. Nothing, nothing too fancy there, obviously. But now we can switch the direction. If we don't like the way it's running, we can operate it the opposite direction, which is super nice. Okay, so as you can see, they also have a plug on the female side, which is super nice. And honestly, I don't know which side's which, so we're just gonna go for it. Okay, so there's one. And then the other side, which these happen to match the color of the machine almost perfect, they do. <laughs> which is kind of cool. So you can pull those out or you can relieve the pressure by doing it that way. Okay, so we'll just try it this way and see if that goes well. Okay, so obviously it's not pressurized, so I don't want to be um, misleading here, but you got a little bit of loss there. So just as before, you got a little bit of dripping. So it looks like it's probably a, a style of connector issue. So those flat face ones for $38, if you're gonna be plugging and unplugging a lot, it might be worth 38 bucks for um, the male and female half to supplement what came with this machine. And then you're not gonna lose oil every time by the you know one teaspoon. So again, if you're out in the field, I don't know if anybody's gonna really freak out too bad about that. Goes in there nicely, no problem there. And then these, these little dust caps might actually hook together. That's kind of nice. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they do hook together. Just to kind of keep them neat and tidy. They do stay together pretty good too, which is nice. So I know on the John Deere tractor we had, those things were always coming decoupled and it was a real pain in the neck. But those ones seem to do well. We also disconnected one zip tie, or we had cut off one zip tie here. So we may actually do one more, but you'll notice that I have a twist here in my line. And that was because we didn't like the direction that it was running before I felt like the controls were counterintuitive to the direction uh, that the angling occurred. So we might test that real quick again and just make sure we don't have any leaks. But before we test for leaks, I want to make sure I have all this stuff dried off because I got a little bit of oil on it when I pulled that one connector off. So we'll pause and do that. Okay. All right, so we've got our connections all made. And then I have a yellow zip tie here and a green zip tie here. And these are not zip tied yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to start the engine and then just angle this thing and make sure we like the direction it's running before we go ahead and put the other side on. We're also going to check for leaks at the same time. Out of gear. The direction that it should be going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zip tie the opposite direction. So if you guys see, I've just got these colored zip ties. It's nothing too out of the ordinary. So yellow is here. So I'm going to hook up. I'm going to put a zip tie that's green here. And that's just going to be my quick reminder when I hook this up that I want to use the green connector on this side and the yellow connector. So that's the pressure and the return, but obviously this is a selected valve control, so, or an SCV. 
so you can go either direction with it. So the pressure and the return are not dedicated, so they switch every time you move the valve one direction or the other. Did you get all that camera crew? Yeah, I already knew that. It's, it's pretty basic stuff on the hydraulic side of things. So, once I get, oh, it's pretty basic, but I can't get my zip ties through. It's a little tight over there. Yeah, it's a little tight. Tight like the tiger. Did you keep your side cutters? I did. Okay. I have them over here. So basically, we will get these zip ties on, and then we have to switch our connections, which means that we're going to have to catch the little bit of oil that leaks out, which is annoying. Um, or we just going to bear it until the next time we have to move it or take it off, which is probably going to be five minutes after I put it back on the next time. Mm -hmm. Probably. So that's the only thing I've noticed so far is that even though we've had to get our forks onto the machine, what, twice since we put this thing on, it's really pretty quick and pretty easy. And the landing gear does definitely work to catch the machine. Mm -hmm. You can angle this thing and you can park it. But one thing I've noticed is that with this quick couple, you do have a tendency of dragging it no matter what you do a little bit. And especially with a cutting blade that's down potentially in grass, you want to be kind of careful about that if you can. You might almost be better off to just lay this flat on the grass. And then this is stuffed down. And you can roll your bucket and then go in and pick it up that way. It might be easier on your turf if you're putting it in grass. And it might keep your hydraulic hoses to flip like forward instead of yeah. being in the way when you go and pick yeah, it up. Yeah, because it is a little bit tricky. You have to get out and you have to decouple these. Uh, we looked at a, a couple of different options and we ended up not going with either of them because you would have had to have a double acting valve. And what we ended up using was a single acting, or not double acting valve, but double acting, meaning you can pull forward or pull backward to release this. And then Parker makes a fixture that will hold on to that. And then if your hoses pull, then it will release the actual front attachment or the back attachment as the machine is pulled away from the fixture or the implement or the trailer or whatever it happens to be. So in this case, we're just gonna switch these, but we're under pressure still. So I guess we can show you how hard it is to do, but I'd rather just relieve the pressure. So lock it one way, lock it the other. This is supposed to be a, a spring, but it's a detent. A detent is actually a superior control because then you can run other accessories that have their own controls after, after that connection point. But in this case, I just wanted it to be spring and I wanted the other one to be detent. So now I have two detents, which is a little bit weird. I was a little bit disappointed with the uh, Coyote dealer because they had led me to believe that one was spring, definitely spring, and one was definitely um, going to be detent, and that was not correct. So again, not a big problem, just a little bit annoying. Okay, so I also had my dust caps. Okay, so I'm just going to let that drip right there. See, the, the male end doesn't really get all that dirty. It's the female end that gets filled up. Mm -hmm. I mean... Pretty much, right? Kind of the way it goes. Kind of the way it goes. Some things just, it's the way it is. Okay, so that's the other thing is make sure that your hoses get into this if you have this type of tractor. Uh, you'll find that it works really nice for you. Okay, so this one I can unhook and catch the little teeny bit of fluid that comes out. And then this time I don't need to mess around. I can just go straight over to the other connector. And then it should be correct. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a second to drip the oil out. Cause even if you slide the connector back in, there's still gonna be residual oil that's forced out as you do it. So I'd recommend wiping it up because I'm a clean freak. We talked about this earlier. <laughs> So now this one, we can come back down here and hook this one up. Super easy. Where we routed our hoses, I felt like we got a pretty good spot. And every single time I've hooked up a quick decouple like this, I've always had some leakage no matter what machine I'm using, with the exception of those flat faces that I thought were so stupid. So. <laughs> 
See, you got to quit. I got to quit learning Assuming. New yeah. Well, I wasn't assuming. Sometimes new things aren't so bad. Well, they're expensive, though. That is Those true. things are more than double the price. But if the Summit ones are half the price that they are, that yeah, they are at the farm half store. Yeah, the equation. But, yeah. That's true. Okay, so we're hooked up. We're hooked up. And then we've got the hoses where we need them to be. And if we know this is the way we're going to go, then I could ask, I could actually put another zip tie or something in here, too, to keep those in the correct position, too. Because you don't want to make them so they're wanting to pull away from each other weird like that. Let's go ahead and start the engine and see how it does when I prime it. resistance to the breakaway action and then obviously we have this set up so that it's split in half so when we get this worn down which is kind of cool you can see light shine through yeah. then we can flip it over and go the other direction uh, hopefully and again this is why I didn't want it beveled because I can flip it this way for sure I can go like this and I will for sure line up with my holes but I may not be able to flip it like this and put it back on, which is the way that I would need to do it, the way that they beveled that. So for practical purposes, if I wanted this beveled, I would want one edge beveled opposite the other. Because uh -oh. that way you know for sure when you flip it, your holes are gonna be spaced exactly the same. So I think we could probably rotate it the other way and it would probably work. Yeah. But that was a little bit irritating. Beyond that, it's done, we got everything greased, working really good, only minimal leakage. I'm ready to use this thing. I'm not. My camera crew doesn't want me to have to use it, but I want to use it like yesterday. So, all right guys, that's all you get. Thanks for staying tuned. There's so much more coming. And yes, it's a lot of airplanes now because at this point, we're back to where we started before we traded off to our new tractor. We've got our snow clearing equipment ready to go. We've got a bucket if we have massive snow. We do not have a backtrack blade, but this will serve the same function. We also have our hay spears adapted so that they'll work. And we have our baler. That's the only thing we have to get ready, which is one controller that we have to actually hook up to 12 volts. And that should be a pretty easy task because the hardest part of doing that on the 1025R was going in and out and up and between all the very tight quarters. And also the fact that I was about this tall and that's about the clearance I had underneath the machine. So this one should be a lot easier. In fact, we can probably chase it about where our hydraulic lines went and have a good protection there. If you guys have questions, let us know in the comments below. We're really happy to try to help how we can. We're learning a lot of this stuff ourselves right now. Some of you are watching thinking, what a bunch of idiots. We understand. So, come back for more. The difference between us and everybody watching is that we're actually doing it, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you guys are all farmers and you've done this a hundred times and it's like you do it in your sleep. But us city folk don't. So, we have to have some experience with it, too. But I am super excited to try it. We will get you guys some video footage of this working in the snow. I just don't know exactly when that's going to happen because we don't control Mother Nature. Any thoughts, camera crew? I'm glad you can be warm and clear snow. I yep. think this will be way better than anything we've done in the past. That's so. right. It'll be good. 
Yeah. Even though I don't want it to snow. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more. We appreciate your support. Buy stuff from the links. If you're gonna buy this thing, you will be doing us a huge favor if you buy from the links. It helps to support our channel. It helps to support our channel financially a little bit, but it also gets us clout with the manufacturers as we start to work with some of these manufacturers. And currently, we're pretty much done. So we need you to get to that step if you want to show more of this equipment, which my camera crew is super <laughs> excited to do. All right, come back for more. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys, a uh, little bit of a reversal here. We had installed the pioneer style agricultural connectors and they worked great from uh over at what was that place? summit hydraulics oh, summit hydraulics mm -hmm. and we'll link to those they worked great and they're what we have on the back of this tractor so that worked out really nice but the flat face evidently isn't supposed to leak quite as much the female coupler on the and these are nice because they come with dust caps for all of them now mm -hmm. these are quite a bit more expensive we spent about uh was it like 30 32 dollars or so each plus each. tax it was like mm -hmm. 70 bucks yeah for the for both pairs which is a pretty good value and these are half inch mpt and they also have them three quarter and then other sizes um but basically with the dust caps and all included and i just redid those so that took me i don't know like a half an hour 45 minutes yeah it wasn't very long it wasn't super hard or anything but basically the way these things work is you just couple them like that and you're done Okay, so it's really nice and it's supposed to make it so that, and you see there's a little ball bearing there and you can actually turn it intentionally so it can't be undone, okay? So I, of course, want it to be able to be done and you see how quick and easy it undoes and then you're lucky if you have just like a hint of oil, like a spritz of oil mm -hmm. on, the, on the face. Now, obviously this is not pressurized right now because I've been working on it and so I've got a fresh piece of cardboard here just in case we get drifts we want to watch for it so I'm actually going to hook it up right now and it's worked really nice the way these hoses came in here it's been working really good so and we also color coded those with these zip ties here um, the green and the yellow and so obviously at this point it doesn't really matter which one goes to which because you have to hook it up the right way now because we have alternating male and female um, and I'm not sure which one's going to be the easier way to go first. The ball's over here. So there's a ball bearing there. So once you're lined up, you just like line it up and push and you're done. And it's super easy. I was concerned that these would be extremely hard, but you just break the pressure. So I usually shut off the machine. It's just easier that way. It's a little bit safer. Um, and then this one here, which is kind of behind. And we've got this all tied up. So it's actually pretty tight here. And so this works out really nice because you can just push straight in. You don't even have to hold the collar, which is nice. Now on the agricultural style, it was cool because you could hook these things together. And I think you can, you can still stick these together just loose so that the dust caps kind of stay out of their way. Um, but in our application, it's not really a big deal. And so these are much bulkier, 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 bulkier. connections um, just in that they're bigger but that mm -hmm. doesn't take up any additional length of hose. So in our case, it doesn't cause us any problems, but you wanna keep that in mind when you're making decisions. Um, I just got done switching, so that's what this rag is. So we're gonna start it, we'll go ahead and just run it for a second and show you what happens. not going to spray oil on you but it may have a little bit more leakage if it's under pressure and it's going to be harder to plug back in so i'll just show you what would happen um, in our case so this i can just pull back and it should just go out it's spring loaded so it's supposed to be extremely hard to do yeah like that's pretty hard i have strong grip so 
I'm going to walk the controls back and forth. You can see it relax the hydraulic lines. I think the camera crew was pointing at it. This relaxed. Okay, that would be erect if it was. Yes, mm. it would be erect if it was full. So now look how easy this is. See how easy that was? And look how much leakage there is. Nothing. Nothing. That's crazy. That is awesome. Now, why did we need this? Because I put my forks on this machine pretty much all the time that I'm not clearing snow. So I just couldn't, I couldn't fathom dropping, you know, three or four teaspoons of oil every time. It wasn't a lot. And you know, like on the back, it's going to, we're going to lose a little bit of oil every time. But let's say it's, you know, like a few milliliters, you know, like 30 milliliters, like a little cup of, you know, medicine or whatever. That's about how much you're losing. So whatever held into that half inch fitting is about what you would lose. Now the, the male side was fine. The female side was full. And then of course you could put the dust cap on, try to catch it, but then, you know, it'd just be a mess. And then you're gonna have oil all over this thing, but you can see how easy this is. It's just really easy to undo. Here, I'll undo the other one. See how easy that was? And then look, you've got on the face of there, you've got just barely anything. Here's a dry spot on there. And you can see it's just, it's hardly anything. It's like not it's like even residue. enough to like rub into the surface of no, the connector. I would rather keep it on there to lubricate it. Right. So as I put that on, I even pulled it back. See, it doesn't release. There's nothing opening. Whereas on the, the Pioneer style or whatever it's called, you would almost have leakage every time you do anything with it. Mm -hmm. So again, that they were just as good as everywhere else that we bought them. And the stuff we bought locally was about double to, it was more like uh, three fifths the cost of what we got from Summit. Mm -hmm. And I'm perfectly happy with these. They look like they're really high quality made. The threads all lined up perfectly. They released nicely. Um, and then of course to rehook it, to rehook it, I just have this set so that I can do that really easy. Of course, you gotta pull your dust caps off and they're actually pretty easy. To, they'll get easier with time, which means they'll also fall off easier with time. And then just, there you are. So you don't even have to hold the collar, which is really nice. And those flat face connectors, they aren't cheap, but I'll tell you what, you already had them on this machine. Yeah. So I actually kept the pair that came with it and I'm probably gonna make um, adapters. And then no matter what I've got hooked up to this, I can just come up and hook it up. And if I need an adapter, I throw an adapter in there quick and we're done. And we have a little bit of leakage. You know, if we have a grapple or something like that, we can use this for a grapple. And then we don't have to keep going back and forth. And that's kind of one thing we talked about is if we're going to be married to a connector style, let's be married to the easier, less messy one. Because we have one tractor and multiple implements. We need and to we be able to change things quickly and not have it be an issue. Yeah. So, and so we just need it. This is gonna be a winter thing mostly, though. I hope. So during yeah during the summer, it is technically capable of, you know. Oh, and then we have one other thing that happened too. We need to tell you about. So you remember how we talked to uh, the company, the Main West had they had oh. accidentally ordered this with a bevel. Well, yep. what they ended up doing was they ended up shipping us a second one uh, that wasn't beveled and it was exactly the dimensions that we ordered. So like I said, I knew they would take care of it. It was no big deal. Um, took a couple of calls, but that's another story. I think there's a miscommunication. So basically the six inch by three quarter by 94 and a half lineal inches is what we ordered. And then of course we drilled our own holes. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with basically another one. They took care of us. Um, I think that was, that was fair. I mean, I actually offered to, you know, have them just split the difference and the next size down or whatever. And, um, they preferred it to ship a whole new one. So I said, that's actually better. I mean, we're getting a lot better value out of it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, um, as usual, we want to give you guys the no BS review of the way this equipment works. Uh, I can't wait to snow. I can't wait to clear the snow with this thing just to show you guys how it works because I'm actually really excited to try it. I'm not so excited about snow because snow just makes life harder. But the thing is, I mean, that's why you pay big money for stuff like this is because you know, life is difficult and then you die. So anyway, I, I want to make, make it more enjoyable <laughs> until then. Um, but this thing so far, it's really impressive. And once we figured out that we could tuck it into itself, did we talk about that in the last video? Yeah, I think you showed it. I did? Yeah, because the only thing you've been doing differently is you've been putting it down on its face in the grass so you can pick it up and not dig into the 
and I'm tucking it into almost the wheel mm -hmm. when like I Like way down under. Because it makes this thing so much smaller. It's actually smaller than with the regular bucket on it. Because mm -hmm. same thing with the bucket. We were putting that bucket flat. And, and the, the angle of the bucket, we were just rolling it down and then putting it on the ground. So it worked out really nice um, because we have we have basically a three foot or a three car garage here, and this thing barely fits in, but it does fit in. And once it's in, it's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. So and then when I need to do some work on it, I just pull out the pickup truck and then I work on it in the middle bay. And today I had to break hydraulics, so I just wanted to just wanted to keep from making a mess. Of course, I put a garbage can there to catch the oil, and I'll throw some oil dry into the garbage can to catch it, but. Beyond that, really happy with these fittings. I knew they were going to work well because we had tested it beforehand. Um, I just didn't know how it was going to work under pressure and everything. And so under pressure, maybe not so good. If you can remove pressure, it's going to be a good move. And yes, in my opinion, what did we spend? $28 for the pair of those? Or was it, it wasn't even quite that much. It might have been 25 bucks. No, it was 29 it was twenty nine for the pair of the pop it style. yep style, which is unfortunate because this is an agricultural use product. But whatever, I mean, it's just it's not worth fighting on a three dollar thing. Um, but I would say for double the price, that's double the value because every time I was hooking this up, I was having to go out there and soak an entire piece of, of uh, paper towel or like two. Who are these? The, the They're like the half sheet, half sheets. Yeah. So two of them. I was well, no, I was going through two every time. Oh, that's how much oil. And then you had to waste the time to clean it. And I just didn't want to get to the point where it's like. Crap, I forgot that one pallet that I need to move. I didn't want in the back of my head, no, nah, I'll just leave it because I don't want to have to break the hydraulic line. Yep. So you guys are going to find that same situation, I'm sure, um, when you eventually get there. So again, the other thing is we bought both pairs. If you bought this from Titan, it already came with one hack. Mm -hmm. So you only need to spend about half of that. Was it like $32? It was plus 30 sales tax. Yeah. So whatever your sales tax is plus 30 something. And we'll link to that in the description below. So if you want to buy it, obviously you can buy it there. Um, and they had free shipping and it was really yeah. fast. Like, it was good. I think it took like four days. So it was like three business days. And then yeah, we ordered it day. over the we weekend. It on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And then I think we got it on Thursday. Thursday. We were supposed to get it Friday, but we got it Thursday. And then the first time they shipped, I think it was like three days. Mm -hmm. So, but we ordered during a week. We ordered it on a weekday. We yeah. got luckier that day. Yep. So, and of course that's going to vary depending on where you are in the country. Yeah. So anyway, very happy with it. Are you sure we didn't show them how it rolls up under? No, I remember because we were standing out there and okay. it was cold. I'm, Good. I'm almost positive that we had it in the last section of video. So in that case, I'm actually ready to store this again. So, cause I'm going to put, well, I don't know. I'll probably leave this on cause just cause you never really know. Yeah. We don't have anything else planned right now. I the, like that I know of. Weekend because then I can go out quickly and cut a tree down and drag my camera crew in to help. Go me. out quickly and cut a tree down. Quickly. Yeah, it just, it only takes 15 minutes. It only takes 15 minutes and then seven hours later we come. Yes. Having worked harder than we did all week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens a lot around here. Yeah. I'm, I'm leaving. I quit. I'm going inside. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the next, the next part of the video is probably not a part of the video because you've seen the whole shebang. You've already seen this run at the beginning. So again, if you haven't figured this out, our channel works like this. We film long videos, you watch, hit the like button, uh, subscribe and click for notifications if you'd like to see more of what you're seeing. All three of those actions will help us as a channel to grow. It's gonna help us to um, work with more vendors. We don't work with these guys currently, but that'd be cool if we could at some point. Now, if you buy from the link in the description, you do help financially with small commissions and things like that. So that really does help our channel. Um, it's, I mean, it's like in the small percentages. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, these are expensive. So if, if you guys are really wanting to help us, we don't have a Patreon begging site. I mean, we obviously have and make good livings. So we're not in this for the money. We're in this to help you guys out. The Coyote Tractor, we just couldn't find anything about it. And we find a ton of stuff about Kubota, tons of stuff about John Deere which rightfully so, they're both great tractors. But the thing is like, this was just, uh, you know, it was just strange. I couldn't find out, it. it was mysterious. Like, is it any good? Well, I'm telling you so far, it's very good. I like it better than my John Deere. The John Deere was great, which by the way, I love my little 1025R and I use the heck out of it. And the guy that I sold it to loves it too. I talked to the guy because anyway, I'm weird like that. But anyway, the, the thing is, this tractor has been great. Mm -hmm. The value for the money is doubly as good as the John Deere. Yeah. I mean, more than doubly. 
because it's significantly cheaper and it's been very good at and it beat the specs on it, everything. And so for those of you that are out there saying, yeah, but you were just looking at spreadsheets, Brian. And I'm like, no, I wasn't looking at spreadsheets. I was looking at a baler and hay and things that I actually need to do with it. And then I went out and did those things with it. And it's been awesome. And it has not let us down in any way. The John Deere let us down only mildly on a couple of different small situations where we're really expecting more from it that could deliver yeah. uh, safely. Yeah. This thing, hopefully we're going to be so much oversized compared to what we've got for applications that it's going to be great. So that's why we're doing these videos right now. They don't produce anything for income on our channel. But if you buy something like this from following the links, you will help support the channel. Anything else you want to add? I think that pretty much covered it. All right. Thanks for watching. Come back for more, guys.